Aleluya. It's in the bathroom. All right. I'm about to go. I'm about to go live right now, guys. All right. Yeah. Okay. Am I live already? Yep, you're live. Yes, yep. you are. Glory Did to you God. Want me to public or just friends, Miguel? Yes, yeah, it's, it's public. It's public. It's for everybody. I mean, on your face. Thank you. So today we're going to be speaking about the church, the current reformation that God is doing on the church. And we're also going to be speaking about... Uh, we're also going to be speaking about the five gifts, amen, according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Amen. We're going to basically be sharing our testimonies uh, on our walk. We have pastor, prophet, evangelist, amen, and uh, yeah, different gifts. We got people from Canada, my sister, um, Manuela. We got prophet and uh, and um, and pastor Randy um, Newman from uh, New York, Buffalo, New York. We also got... um. My brother Isaiah, Evangelist Isaiah from um from Florida. And then we have my brother Ariel, Prophet Ariel from um Michigan. Amen. Detroit, Michigan. Glory to God. So um <clears throat> I think I'm gonna basically let my brother um Prophet Randy start first. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let the man of God start first, and then from there we can um we can move for all, all the other people. You want me to start by the Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely. It starts by saying the ministry gifts. I'm going to start at verse 7, if it's okay with you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. It says here, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Mm. Wherefore, he saith, when he yeah. is ascended up on high, he led away captivity captive mm -hmm. and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is he but he has also ascended first unto the lower parts of the earth? Mm. He mm. has ascended all the same also. He has ascended up far above all the heavens, that he might fill all the things. Verse mm. 11 says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors, and teachers. Amen. Right there. Wow. Uh, the five-fold ministry setting, it, he said it upon the earth, talking about us, not just Jew, but Gentile, the people of God, the body of Christ. He's Amen. putting gifts into place. He wants his body, the body of Christ to be organized. Mm -hmm. in place. Wow. He's called us not just for ourselves, but for the body of Christ so he can be edified. And that's Amen. Apostle Paul teaching uh, the Church of Ephesians. He's uh, strengthening them in the tentacles of the faith, in the body of Christ, and in, uh, in belief. He's pouring into them like a pastor would, but mm -hmm. yet he still operate as an apostle. And he's building up the church. Amen. He's not rebuking the church. He's just strengthening them physically, Amen. spiritually, and mentally. And we have to understand this. You can't keep beating the people in church if, if you don't want them to be strengthened. Either you're going to allow the sheep to come in so we can be on one accord and strengthen under the apostolic blanket, under the skirt or the covering of the mm -hmm. apostle of the church. And a true apostle has seen Jesus Christ besides Amen. the prophet. Amen. 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 I, I, I agree with that prophet. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Anything else you want to add on to that? Uh, verse number 12 says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. And then also it says, till we come together in the unity of faith and knowledge mm. of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of his stature and fullness of Christ. Verse 13, I'm going to explain a little bit of it right here. It mm -hmm. says, Apostle Paul teaches the unity of the Spirit and teaches the unity of faith and maintain a perfect or perfection, wow. accepting one in faith and in measure of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, wow. growing in grace because we're living up under grace, even in the New Testament. Wow. Growing in grace, 
advancing mm -hmm. forwards and towards spiritual maturity. Most right. of us have come off of milk and on meat. That's mm -hmm. spiritual maturity. Meat is the substance of the word. Come milk on. Is when you first get saved, every baby That's deserves right. milk. Right. Right. Sincere right. milk. Right. So we're still growing spiritually into maturity mm -hmm. in all aspects unto who? Christ. That's and right. being filled with the fullness of Christ and God. Mm -hmm. uh, being no longer children who are accepted every wind or doctrine. Because back mm -hmm. then, there were many doctrines. That's so right. We follow the doctrines and the teachings of Jesus Christ. That's the one who died on the cross. That's the wow. one who died on the cross for your sins. That's mm -hmm. the one who saved you. When you were water immersed, mm -hmm. baptized in water, and filled with the Holy Ghost according mm -hmm. to Acts. To That's right. So as we begin to grow in grace, you have to be born again. Mm -hmm. That's right. You have to be, if you're prophetic and called to the office of a prophet, you have to be an intercessor mm -hmm. and you also have to be teachable. Mm -hmm. Not just preach and hoop. The anointing mm -hmm. is not in the hoop. The yeah. anointing is in the teaching. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Absolutely. Yes. So here, uh, uh, not by every wonder doctrine, but instead having the knowledge of the truth by which to reject the false teachers. Mm -hmm. mm. And there wow. were a lot of false teachers going on in that day. People are wow. making up doctrine now. Making and, up doctrine. And if it has no scripture or base mm -hmm. or foundation, that teaching is not of Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the what? The life. Right. That's right. That's right. That's There's right. no other teachings. Now, That's you right. also understand Apostle Paul because he's teaching also but correcting the church. Mm -hmm. He's teaching them to how to sustain, stay engrossed in the word, stay with mm -hmm. substance, know that the rock is still Jesus Christ. That's right. He's That's teaching right. with a great foundation. He's, Jesus Amen. Christ is what? The chief cornerstone. That's right. That's right, prophet. He's the chief cornerstone. Right. It says here, holding and speaking the revealed truth of scripture in love. Be right. gifted, be called, but where's the love of God? If mm -hmm. you have a gift from the heavens, the fivefold ministry, you must first walk in the love of God. That's Jesus, right. come on. Or That's you right. become a sounding mm -hmm. brass or a what? Tingling symbol. That's right. Oh, you cannot prophesy and be arrogant or <laughs> pompous or high-minded. You have to be in the spirit to flow <laughs> under God's skirt or blanket or anointing. Hallelujah, Lord. You have to walk in love. And that's not always easy. We are flesh, yet we're human, but yet we're divinely called. That's right. And that's it's right. not always a loving situation dealing with people who are not mature. Mm -hmm. And all saints are not mature, not have yet, as of yet. You have that's to right. do what? The process. And that's right. Says, mm -hmm. That's right. That's here, revealing truth in love and walking in righteousness and true, and I'm going to slow it down, yep. holiness. You can be gifted, called, mm -hmm. selected, handpicked. Yeah. But you walk in love, but the other phase here is mm -hmm. walking in holiness. Mm -hmm. God has with me about the holy walk for the mm -hmm. last two years. Well, get gifted, get holy, get called, but where's the love? Okay. Are you living holy before the people? Are you living holy behind mm -hmm. closed doors? There That's is right. a difference. That's right. I'll just give you this little analyst and I'm going to turn That's it loose. Right. Uh, have you ever been out? About out shopping somewhere, and you didn't have on a clergy or a cross or a Bible, and mm -hmm. somebody recognized that you were a Christian without you even saying anything. Yep, the way you conduct yourself. The way you conduct yourself. They yeah. knew then you were a believer of Jesus Christ and you were living a holy life. Amen. That's right. That's right, man of God. You got to no, no, no. be gifted, but you got to live holy. That's you right. You mm -hmm. got to be an example. You got to be an example. Be by be because those people are watching you. We are yeah. like walking Bibles. That's yeah. right. People are watching us. You make Living a mistake. That's right. They, they will judge you for that. You That's said right. you are a Christian. Yeah. I am. I'm subject to error. But then after you start growing in grace, there are certain tests that come your way. You pass them. Mm -hmm. If you don't pass it the first time, that test is coming up again. That's but right. you still got to live holy. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Amen. I'm in agreement with the prophet of God right there. Uh, um, I'm 100% agreement with that. We know what's going on. Um, 
as some of you know what's going on in the body of Christ, mm -hmm. uh, prideful gifts have been exposed because of lack of holiness, That's because right. of lack of righteousness. Amen. God mm -hmm. has exposed them. You know what I mean? And um, as, as five full leaders, we must um, be example to everybody else because we're going to be hold in a, in a higher standard, especially those who have a, you know, a calling to leadership, you know, whether prophet, apostle, or pastors, they're going to be held in a higher standard. So when we conduct ourselves as, as ministers before the people of God, which by the way, fivefold gifts uh, is all the fivefold, all of them are teachers. Amen. All of them, mm -hmm. the evangelist, the prophet, the the pastor, the, the, the apostle, all of them are teachers. They're meant to edify. Edify meaning they're meant to equip, to teach the body of Christ, to groom them to full stature, to full maturity. Amen. So for mm -hmm. what? For, for, for they can do the work of the Lord, which is obviously win souls and stuff like that, you know, and and do whatever God has called them to do. Amen. But mm -hmm. um, one of the most important things that we have to um, realize that God is doing right now, he's, um, he's doing a reformation in the body of Christ. Amen. He's doing a reformation in, in the church. He's changing people out of, out of position and putting other people in position. The body of Christ right now is being reformed. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's reforming. Yeah. And ever since COVID, the church yes. has not been the same and it will not be the same. As a matter That's of true. fact, I believe yeah. an, an agenda has been um, set in heaven for the body of Christ to change the, the church. You know, Amen. And been a lot of um, things. One of the reasons why God is revealing those things that were put under the rug and hidden, he's bringing it to life because Jesus said in the scriptures, he said, everything that is hidden shall come to light. You know what I mean? Jesus. Everything in the darkness mm -hmm. shall come to the light. So he, he's making sure that those words are being fulfilled today. You know, every, everything that has been hidden under a rug, that has been put under a rug, it hasn't been addressed, is coming out to light. Why? Because he wants to perfect his church. We know that the Lord is coming, very, is coming back very soon. And the body of Christ has to be in order, in holiness. Right. He's not That's coming true. for a tainted bride, a messed up bride. You know what I mean? Right. He's coming for a pure and it's holy bad. bride. Bad. It's a difference yes. there. It's a, it's a pure and holy bride. So now... What God is doing, he's exposing not to destroy nobody. It's with an attempt for the fear of the Lord to be released again in the house of God. Hear what mm -hmm. I'm saying right now? The fear of the Lord has to be released again in the house of the Lord. Yes, Why? Because it, it, it was taken off. People lost the fear for, for God. We saw the rise. We, were, we have seen the rise of false prophets, false ministers, false teachers, because we, we no longer have the, the fear of the Lord. And God is, God is showing the body of Christ globally. That, you know what I mean? No one can mock him. He's showing it. He's, he's, he's doing it right now. He's showing it globally that no one can mock him. No one can make, make, make play around his house. Amen? Because he's still a governor. He's, that's, that's his bride. He cares for his people. He loves his people. And it's, like I said, it's not an attempt to destroy them. It's an attempt to let them know, you know what I mean? I'm seeing what you're doing, and I'm not going to tolerate it. For the that's word right. of God says that God is love, but he's also a consuming fire. That's in the book of yeah. Hebrews. That's right. Amen? Come on. And, um... I, I I'm I'm saying all this to say that you know everybody here has a different you no know, has had a different walk has a, a different time in, in the Lord. Prophet Newman right here is, Paul is our elder, one of the elders in in, in the in the ministry. Well, obviously he has a longer time. He's seen more than us that we just came up. You know what I mean? In 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 in, in the faith, but he knows and he's seen many many unjust unjust behaviors in the mm -hmm. church. Amen. Moved by different years unjust behaviors. And one of the things I want to address in, in the body of Christ that has to come back is honoring the fivefold gift. Amen. Amen. And not honoring Amen. the ones that are popular, the ones that God has placed in your ministry. Hear what I'm saying right now. Honoring those that God has placed in your ministry in your own house. You know what I mean? We see that many ministers make investments to bring all this gift that are so-called famous into their, their churches. And they have among themselves in their own, in their, this, this, this apostles and pastors have in their own ministries, they have mighty prophets, mighty evangelists, mighty teachers, mighty pastors, and some even some apostles themselves. But those gifts are not used. Why? Because we're looking at something, some, some, uh, some, somebody else. I believe as, as leaders in the body of Christ that God has seen this and God is not pleased with this. You know what I mean? We have to let people go forth. I understand mm -hmm. that there's a time for a person to be fed. And have to learn by a person that has been six, seven years in the, in the faith and has been submitted, that has been taken, you know, um, he, he has been listening to counsel and be listening to his leadership. I believe he has to have a chance. And you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, Prophet um, 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 Randy. He has to have a chance to go forth and use 
his gift, you know, for, 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 for that congregation. That's my opinion. And that's something that I, I've seen and it, and it has to begin to unfold like that. You know, um, it has, it doesn't have to be a mega church with 5,000 people, 5,000 people, 10,000 people. It's about everybody coming together and mm -hmm. helping each other build each other up. That's mm -hmm. what it was in the book of Acts. The book of Acts speaks about that. They broke bread on a daily basis. You see what I'm saying? They broke Oh, hello. Did he cut out? Hello? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. So the, the book of Acts speaks about that they broke bread on a daily basis. And when they broke bread on a, on a daily basis, um, they would have fellowship. Amen. And they were a family. They were all in one accord. Now we see clearly, we see clearly that the body of Christ doesn't have to suffer fellowship anymore. You go to a church, you meet somebody. And probably the next time you're going to go to that, the church, you're not going to see that person again. You know what I mean? You're not going to have fellowship again. But the thing is that discipleship, in order to create disciples among the people, in order so we can have disciples built, we have to have that time of community together. Where we become, you know, where we become as, as, as family, when we break bread, when we sit down and talk, you know what I mean? Where we can express ourselves, you know what I mean? And this, it's, it's like a, a more intimate time. It's kind of like koinonia, a fellowship, you know what I mean, among the brethren. Amen. Jesus mentioned in the scriptures, in one of the uh, gospels, that they will know that you are my disciples by the love that you have for each other. Amen. By the love that you have for each other. When we begin to bring this structure back to the body of Christ, I believe that we will see a, a better, a, a better um, level of fellowship, a, a greater level of of, of 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 building up of the saints. We will see greater fruit. We will see people that are going to be more on fire and we will have less casualties of, of, of church hurt. Amen. A lot less casualties of church hurt. Now, um, I'm going to basically um, let my brother Ariel right now um, go forth and, and say what, you know, whatever the Lord has laid on his heart. Jesus. To elaborate on what Prophet Randy and Brother Miguel is talking about the reason why the church is dysfunctional right now is because not only the lack of love, but the lack of order. One thing that we do not, we no longer see in the church is people honoring the elders, honoring the prophets. Because how can how can a church function? without the mouthpiece of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the prophet. The Bible says that, that the prophets are the friends of the Lord. The Bible says that the prophets not only hear from the Lord, they are messengers from the Lord. So how come or one can say that we have a church that represents the Lord Jesus Christ if there are no prophets? In order for a church to truly function, you need the fivefold ministry. Because as the word says in, in the book of James, how can one um, part of the body function without the other? If we have no eyes, how can we use our hands? If we have no feet, how can we walk? Every, every part of the body has its function, as it is with the body of Christ. And, and another thing to elaborate on, on what the prophets just mentioned is there's a lack of character. People want fame. People want glory. People, people want attention, as we see on the internet with these cash app, quote unquote, prophets, these cash app, quote unquote, apostles. Amen. People who who seek to distort the body of Christ with money, they are not true prophets. They are not true apostles. If one calls himself an apostle but yet has not had a true vision of the church, we uh, we have to question whether or not they're apostle. If one claims to be a prophet of the Lord Jesus Christ but yet has no sight, has no character 
has no discernment, we have to question whether or not they're a prophet. This is why we have to go back to the basics, which brings Amen. me to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 to 23. And it talks about character. But I'm going to start in verse 19. And it says, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know my affairs, and I do know. Tychirus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all these things. But the fruits of the Spirit, as, in, uh, as it stated in Galatians 5, 20, in chapter 5, I'm going to go to that real quick. Give me one second. Our, our love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, keyword faith, which um which uh, which uh goes back to Hebrews Hebrews chapter eleven verse one when it says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That is a part of the vision of a church. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Mm -hmm. and, wow. and, and this is a part of character. In order to be a leader, you have to first be a servant. That's right. Yeah. And, 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 the, and the key... And the key to being a servant is humility, learning how to serve, learn to accept correction, uh, learn to listen, be quick, uh, be quick to be quick to listen and slow to speak. That is character. And this is something that is lacking in the church today. People always want to speak, people always want to talk, people want to be heard, but yet they don't want to listen, they don't want to absorb. They don't want to hear the prophets. They don't mm. want to hear the elders. And people wonder why the church is so dysfunctional right now. This goes back to the basics. And part of the basics is to have character. Amen. And if we have no character, you cannot be a leader. If you cannot serve, you cannot be a leader. If you cannot serve, you cannot say Truly, yeah. that you know Lord Jesus Christ, because the concepts of Christ-like leadership is servant, is being a servant. For for Jesus Christ came to serve. Amen. 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 Isaiah, my brother, you have anything? Absolutely, man. Um. Mm -hmm. Man, I am I am I okay? I'm not on mute. I'm just double checking, making sure I'm not on mute. Um, you know, I I I just believe that in this next season that we're all moving into, that God is speaking, and that we need to take heed to the word of the living voice of God. We need to understand that we need to be moving. Also, on um, what God is speaking right now in the now moments, we need to be present. Um, and, you know, what's a simple way to, you know, apply this to your life is is basically having that having that fellowship with God, having that intimacy, that deep, deep intimacy with God to where it's it, you're he you're hearing the preceding word of the living God. You know, God is still speaking. Um, and so many times we get caught up and, you know, trying to be these theologians and getting so caught up in the word that we're not discerning what God is speaking right now in our lives. 
we're trying to we're trying to find what God's speaking in the in the Word of God, which that's one way that God speaks as well, and and that's 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 forever gonna be that way. You know, you're gonna find um how to how to hear from God through reading His Word, but you know, there's there's meditation, there's revelation, there's there's ways to hear from God and what He's trying to speak over your life, what is on His heart. A lot of times, man, we're preaching a dead. We're preaching to a dead tree, like we're preaching to a dead horse, because we're not preaching what's on Papa's heart. We're not preaching what's on his heart right now in in the moments that we need to be present wow. Wow. and we need to be flowing in the currents of the living water, and 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 we're hmm. so busy trying to trying to regurgitate something that we heard three months ago. And it was powerful, but that huh. was what God was speaking three months ago. And now God's got a new message. Now God's got something that's on his heart right now that's urgent. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I believe that that's, that's imperative. That is vital. That is like one of the most um, heart-wrenching things that I've noticed with, within the past, you know, year or so is that, you know, Where's Papa's heart in all of this? Mm -hmm. You know, we get so yeah. caught up in, you know, titles and trying to, you mm. know, be somebody that God's, I want to be a servant. I'm I'm here, master. I'm here. I'm a servant. I'm hearing, I'm hearing your voice. What are you saying? You know, I was, I was watching, um, I was watching the book of Samuel and Samuel kept hearing Samuel kept hearing his name being called. So he, he would get up out of bed and he would walk over to uh prophet Eli and he would be like, Eli, I'm here. I'm here. You're, you're, what do you need? And, and Eli would be like, go back to bed. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not calling you. I'm not calling you. And then God would call Samuel, Samuel again. And so this happened three times. Samuel would get out of bed and he'd walk over to Eli and he'd be like, Eli, I'm here. What, what do you, why are you calling me? What do you need? And finally, Eli started to understand what was going on here. And he was like, hey, God is calling your name. Next time you hear God calling your name, say your servant is listening and listen to what God is saying to you. And so he goes back down. He goes to bed and he's sitting there and God calls his name again. And the first thing that comes out of his mouth is your servant is here. I'm listening. And so. You know, I, I think that that's 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 imperative in these moments. Also, last thing that I'm going to say before I wrap it up is that, you know, um, these things like like I didn't I didn't I don't have nothing on my mind. This is a straight current from God. Like I'm not sitting here. I had no agenda that I had nothing to say. I would the second that you caught upon my name is boom when it all hits. That's when. That's when it all comes to me. Why? Because God said, I will load your lips. And I'm going to bring the prophet Jeremiah into this because I watched the prophet of Jeremiah last night. And I watched the um the book of uh, Solomon this morning. I finished mm -hmm. that up as well. But, um, you know, watching the book of Jeremiah, what this man would say, this man would prophesy in front of the whole, in front of Israel, the most courageous and bold stuff. And he would literally get locked, beat down, yeah. locked up, in prison, beat down. I watched this man, his his girlfriend basically got killed in his arms, all because he's a prophet of the Lord saying exactly what God is saying to his children. Ooh, that's and deep. he's getting he's getting wrecked for it. So that's you know deep. that's that's another really big thing that we're not seeing nowadays is people speaking exactly what's on the heart of God and then getting wrecked for it. And then like really like <laughs> Like, oh, you're getting cancer culture. Yep, you're getting knocked off the pulpit. Yep, you can't preach here ever again because that's not what God is saying. They were proclaiming this man to be a prophet of Babylon. They were saying you're a prophet of Babylon. Like, like that you're that, that, that you're working for them because you're basically prophesying for that their victory when it mm -hmm. wasn't that way. It was that God's people had let so much sin and idols and all this stuff in the body of Christ to where when Jeremiah would prophesy, it would sound like he's working for the ops. 
But in all, re in all reality, God's basically saying, I'm turning y'all over. I'm turning y'all over to the opposition because you guys are, you guys, you guys need to be, this needs to be cleaned up. My land needs to be cleaned up again. I need, I need to work in the hearts of my children again because it, it got, it got to the point to where it was just about acts where they're, they're slicing, you know, these innocent animals and just trying to pay for a sin that, that, that they're going to continue to do. So, um, you know, the walk with the Lord is, 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 you know, we gotta, we gotta be pursuing the will of God and that might not look all the mm -hmm. time, like, like blessings and like, we're, like one, one of the things that God said to Jeremiah was you're not going to marry. And I was like, Oh snap. Like what? I was like, what God? Like, and all, and all of the, and all of the wives and the children of your nation are going to get slaughtered and all of this. And I'm like, what? Like, so, you know, pursuing the will of God sometimes doesn't always look like, you know, you're going to be exalted and, and, and men are going to look up to you for your wisdom. No, you're going to be a mouth. You're going to be a mouthpiece of God. And for that, you're going to be hated and you're going to say what's exactly is on, on Papa's heart and it is not going to look pretty. So. Amen. Glory be to God. <laughs> Praise God. And when you mentioned that, um, just the story of Jeremiah, like my spirit was just like, my goodness, like soaring because we cannot forget about the prophets of the old. Let me, let me, let me say that and repeat that for everybody listening. We cannot forget about the prophets of old or dismiss the prophets of the old Testament because how many Jeremiah's are walking around today? The Bible says that the spirit is going to fall on the old and the young. And how many young people are being frustrated because they're getting a fresh word of God. This fresh spirit of God is falling on the younger generation as well. And we need to take a grip and recognize that there's a younger generation that needs to be pulled in to the fivefold. We need, they, we need to, the church needs to understand that there's a younger generation that is rising up and they are filled with the fire. There's many Jeremiah's, not only Jeremiah's, but there's John the Baptist. There is many prophets in the modern day that are dealing with things right now, battling things because they don't know where to express it. They, they're not being embraced in the church because they're too radical. So that's when the church starts to start recognizing that we need to start opening our hands. And there needs to be a partnership with the older generation and the younger generation. We need the fathers to now start embracing the sons and the mothers, but also the sons need to start um, breaking off of the rebellion and the orphan spirit. And we need to embrace and recognize when a father and a mother is speaking. And this is when the spirit of God falls. This is when restoration comes. This is when the healing comes. And there needs to be those two hands coming together in this generation in the time that we are in. It is true what Miguel said. And a lot of us are aware that when COVID happened, the church shifted. And we can't forget that because church was never the same. How many churches did compromise? They did compromise. They became uh, they became a lack of faith. They had a lack of faith. They were more afraid of COVID than they were with God. So mm -hmm. how uh, we need mm -hmm. we need a fresh way of the Holy Spirit. We need more fear of God today. Jesus, we are more afraid of you than the spirit of sickness. Lord, we have more faith that you're going to feed us than the times of, of the recession that they keep having rumors about. Because America will get hit and we need to be ready because we need to rise up the younger generation. There's a whole army of um, soldiers of Christ that are rising up and we need to take a grip of the move that's happening right now. So we need to embrace the fathers. We need to embrace the elders in the church, but they also need to recognize that there's a lot of young people, radical, fiery people that also need to be embraced. They need to be fathered and ushered into mm -hmm. protocol, the word, accountability, because God is doing something new and we need to get a grip of it we need to get a hold of what's happening well we have too many on the blind side on the sidelines that are walking away from god because of a hard season they went through and they could not recognize that that season was a season of breaking but but they did not have a father they did not have a mother or they didn't even hear a voice of the church telling them it's just a season you will get through it that they had walked away from god that we need to start being aware that there are souls everywhere and that the harvest is ripe in America. 
but we yeah. need to start tapping into the fivefold ministry. We need to start um, stop forgetting about the evangelism. Tithes and right. offerings are not just to pour into the church to build bigger temples. They're to feed the widows, to feed the Come poor, on. to feed the Come hungry. On. That's it. That's you it. Know, we need Come to start That's getting it. into every place of society and city right there. to go. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm calling it out. We need to start operating in our full giftings. Why? Because the, the giftings, mm -hmm. the anointing breaks the yokes. And we need to be going into the streets because there's much more uh, prophets, ministers, evangelists, and apostles that are in the drug homes. Yeah. How many people, Miguel, do we know that were lost on drugs but are so hungry and radical for God? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we need to go and look for the souls. They're everywhere, everywhere, right. not just the streets, but Amen. even in the church. A lot of us need a fresh awakening of what's happening right now. Amen. Oh, what wow. is happening right now, guys? Amen. Um, one of the things that I want to touch on before I let my sister, um, Manuela, go forth now and, and release the word. I want to say something real quick. I want to emphasize something real quick that has to be emphasized. Um. Let me just say that every believer is called to evangelize, not just the evangelist. It's every believer in, in every fivefold right. gift called to be a witness. Jesus gave the Holy Ghost so people can be so that the, the apostles can be a witness of him. So if you have the Holy Spirit, and let's say you're not part of the fivefold, but you have the gift of word of knowledge or the gift of prophecy, and you're not using those gifts to win souls, or you have the gift of miracles, or you have the gift of faith, and you're not using that gift to win souls, there's a problem, mm -hmm. my friend, and you or barren in the spirit. Hear what I'm going to say, because it has to be said. Some people are not saying it. Some pastors are not saying it. Some so-called apostles are not saying it. But so, some apostles just want people to be before be, be in, in the four walls. The early church in the book of Acts, had, one of the pillars that they had was evangelism. That's why the Bible says that the Lord added unto the church daily. Mm. That's what the Bible says in the book of Acts. The Lord added unto the church daily. And the early apostles were caught, were taught how to be evangelistic because Jesus told Peter, I will teach you how to be a fisherman of men. Mm. He, didn't he didn't tell me, I'm going to teach you how to be apostolic or prophetic. I'm going to teach you how to be a fisherman of men. Now, people <laughs> claiming all these offices, I'm a pastor, I'm a teacher. You have no, not even one soul on your belt. Not even one soul. Can you imagine going before Christ without one soul? That's what I'm going to say. Think about what I'm saying to you. Not even one soul. You had opportunities. You had chances. But you were lazy. You were lazy and you didn't want to do it. Or maybe you were ashamed of proclaiming Jesus. That's why Paul says, woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. Amen. Woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. Now watch what I'm about to read right now. Um, It's in 1 Corinthians. You guys spoke about serving. I think my brother Eric spoke about serving. But I want to speak about what Paul says. And this is the real apostle. This is the apostle Paul. For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself a servant unto all. Mm. Unto all that there that are under the law as under the, under the law, and that I might gain them that are under the law. Watch what I'm about to say right now. Paul became a servant, and the greatest being that walked on this green earth was Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, I came to serve. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I came to serve. I'm asking. Well, my question is this: Christ became a servant to all men. He didn't. He wasn't looking for people to basically bow down before him. Hear what I'm saying to him. He wasn't looking for people to bow down before him, to idolize. You know what I'm saying? To idol. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't looking for that. He became to show the love of the Father, because according to the Book of John, Jesus is the heart of God. Hear what I'm saying right now, so people can understand. Can understand? Can understand Bible. Jesus was the heart of God. So when he speaks, you just cannot say, oh, that's the son of God speaking. No, sir. That's the heart of the Father speaking to you. Mm -hmm. The heart of the Father speaking to you. Jesus was the, the heart of God. Amen. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that people will not perish, but for them to have eternal life. Eternal life. It's always right. been one thing with God. One, one thing. Want to know what it is? Souls. It's That's been good. about the souls. It's been about the souls, and it will continue to be about the souls. How many souls right now in the body of Christ, even in the body of Christ? I'm not speaking about the, the, the world. Even in the body of Christ, right now are not safe. And they're, going, they're, in, and they're in between a so-called man-made uh, four walls and bricks, um, so-called temple. I don't want to address that because I will have to go to the book of Action and say what Stephen 
the evangelist, Stephen, the, 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 the evangelist saw, told the Pharisees, for the most, like the prophet says, what temple will you build for me if earth is my footstool? I'm, heaven, is my, for heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. That's God speaking. That's not Stephen. That's the Lord speaking. That's the Lord speaking right there. Amen. So we, we have all these investments. All these investments. Let me say something. This is not a time, and I'm speaking prophetically now, right now. This is not a time to make million dollars investments in child and house and in, 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 in mega mega churches. This is not that, that 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 this is not the time for that. This is the time to make investments on souls, make investments on the people that have nothing, make investments on, on those people, on those kids that are basically being raised up by God. God is putting them on their front line and they don't have a father. The Bible wow. says in Corinthians, for oh, you have many teachers and instructors, you don't have many fathers. We need those so-called apostles, if they really are, or prophets, to stand up and become fathers now in, in, in the body of Christ. We need to make, make investments in the widows. Many widows go to church. They have nothing to eat in their, in their, in their house. Nobody goes forth and says, here's $100. So you have $1,000 to give to a, to a ministry, but you don't have $100 to give it to a widow so she can eat, so her kids can eat, her babies can eat. There's a problem there. There's a problem there because there's no way God will tell you, give the, your $1,000 your to, to, you know what I mean, for this guy's Ferrari or this guy's airplane, but he's not telling you, give $100 to that brother that's, that's in need. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to discern the voice, the, the, the voice of the Father. And some people mm -hmm. are not discerning the voice of God. Some people are being mm -hmm. manipulated because we have manipulators in the body of Christ. I'm a man that I believe in sowing. I believe in giving my tithings. I see miracles because of this. Let me just say, I believe in it. But when we, we get scriptures and we twist it, we twist the word of God as leaders, as of men of influence. And we do this to manipulate the flock of God, to give to us because of greed. Then we have a problem. Then we have a problem because the intention is showing before you're showing the father and the son of the living God. He who has the eyes of flames of fire, who's watching you, who's judging you, what you're doing in your ministry will ask you and hold you accountable on that day before when you go before the, the beam of seat of Christ and ask you why you did this. With what authority you did this? Jesus never charged anybody for no for no prophetic word. He mm -hmm. never charged anybody for 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 casting out a demon, for getting somebody healed. You see what I'm saying? You give in the New Testament out of the abundance of the heart. You give as the Lord leads you because God can put in your heart. Bless that brother for a thousand dollars. God can put in your heart. Support that that campaign that that revival that that brother is doing. Support it because you have the money. I give you the money. So that's not your money. That's my money. God gives you money as a man of God in the New Testament. Just know that's not your money. That's the Lord's money. You're just a steward of that money. So when God tells you to give and sow, you give and sow because God is commanding you to give and sow. Amen? Because the Lord is leading you. The Lord is leading you to do it. Now, some people want to basically enforce on those who do not have. They want to enforce the sowing and the tithing. You see what I'm saying? I don't even know what I'm saying, but I, God's, God's laying on my heart right now. Some people want to enforce the sowing and the tithing in the body of Christ to manipulate and to hustle the people of God. And the so-called prophets and apostles and, and the pastors and the leaders are not standing up and speaking. But the Lord Most High, Most God, Most High God is doing something right now. And you want to know what it is? He's raising up a new breed of fivefold gifts. He's raising up new prophets, new apostles that will not bow to Baal, that will not listen. They will not listen to Mammon when he whispers in, in, in his ears. Because you can prosper as a man of God without having to hustle the people of God. By, true, by you just being righteous and seeking the kingdom of God, God will prosper you. Man, I just look so powerful right now. By you seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the most, God, the most high God will prosper you. Amen? You don't have to basically manipulate the people of God. God will prosper you because you are a righteous man. You didn't see Abraham begging nobody for, for money, yet God multiplied him. Everything that man touched, it was prosperous. Why? Because he had a covenant with God. And God saw because of his faith, he was he, he was he was righteous. Amen. I'm gonna leave it right there. Sister Manuela, you can go on and and give your, your part. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I have a very big burden right now um for uh what's going on because um, like you mentioned, God will not be mocked. And um, as of right now, everything that's happening, we're seeing that he is not standing for it. He is not taking for it. And um, we're really losing, like you mentioned, the heart of God in the church right now. 
Um, we're adding progressiveness. We're adding uh, modernism. We're adding our own pride and what we want. And we're adding God in it as a way to, um, you know, progress some kind of agenda um, as if God is going to bless the fruit of our hands when we're also using those hands to, uh, you know, uh, tear things down. So there's a really big burden on um, God just being very upset uh, with his church. And, uh, you know, it says that, that the church is his bride. And right now the church is not spotless. Mm -hmm. uh, the church is really just mocking the groom. Mm -hmm. uh, they think there's time, but time is running out. Um, we're talking about people that are going to say, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? And um, we're seeing that right now. Um, a lot of it goes back to the fact that we forgot who uh, Jesus is. We forgot who God is. We uh, seem to have forgotten who the God of the Old Testament is. Um, and we're just looking at this new God that has been created today to form people's lives. Um, we're looking at uh, doctrines of, you know, demons, as people say, false doctrines that make us feel good about ourselves, make us feel about um, good about our sin. Um, but, you know, the devil is very uh, crafty when we start falling back um, into specific lifestyles um, where we don't even know. Uh, there's, you know, a verse in the Bible where it talks about uh, if you think that darkness that is in you is light, how deep is that darkness? Uh, that is pretty much what a lot of people are living in right now in a lot of darkness that they believe is light. Um, a lot of this has to do with the fact that the church is not actually functioning the way that it should be functioning. Uh, we don't have discipleship. We have people coming in who are saying a prayer, who um, are just uh, being left alone to do things on their own. Uh, Jesus has called us to be fisher of men, um, but it seems to be like there isn't much going on about um, the people that are actually hungry for God, the people that actually want to go and do the will of God, uh, who are willing to deny themselves and um, pick up the cross and uh, do things that a lot of other people are not willing because God has instilled it in their hearts. Um, but a lot of people are not uh, discipling. Uh, they're wanting numbers. They're wanting popularity. Uh, they're wanting money. And they're wanting fame. And when we look at Jesus, he didn't want any of that. Because all he wanted to do was the will of his father. Um, and I feel like that's the heart. We're losing the heart of the church. The church is being divided. The church is falling apart. Uh, the church is being ridiculed. Uh, righteously, I would say, because they're doing a pretty bad job. Um, a lot of people are not standing up. A lot of people are scared of opposition. They're scared of being canceled. Uh, mm -hmm. They're scared of being hated. But you know what? Jesus said what? Right? That they're going to hate you because they hated me first. So we have lost the fear of God and um, we have gained the fear of man. The fear of man seems to be a lot more uh, important to us than the fear of God. Uh, but we have seemed to have forgotten who God is. And this is why we need to go back. We need to go back to the basics. We need to go back to Christianity 101 and understand who the loving God is, who also um, mm -hmm. has power and walks before us and behind us and also perceives God is love, but God is also God of justice. Dang this is why I started off by saying that God will not be mocked. Uh, the same way God has patience and love, he also knows when it is time to stop. And uh, right now he's calling his church back uh, because he wants a spotless bride. Uh, God is very gentle, uh, but he's also very righteous and he's also very serious. And what we're seeing right wow. now is just the church going rampant and God is not happy with it. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to start standing up and really more than ever now speaking and bringing people back. We need to pray, not deal with things in carnality, because we know that Ephesians 6 talks about that, right? Um, but also have the church come together and become a five-fold church, because that is what the principles of what has been installed for us to do, and we have to do it. The reason why this is all falling apart is because of lack of order. People believe that they can do whatever they want, however they want, and God will bless it, and he will not. Yeah, You can't use the same mouth that you use to speak of his word and also blaspheme God as well mm -hmm. or live the way you do on Sunday. But then the rest of the week you're hiding out because if the world knew you will be kicked out of the pulpit, it's time to let go of the old man fully and surrender it all. Come on. Start walking righteously. Wow. You know, the Bible talks about 
uh, the Bible talks about that, you know, there's a higher standard that we're held to, right? When much is revealed, much is expected. Um, there comes a time where I believe that it was better that I didn't know God because I felt like I knew too much. I was walking in conviction, but I wasn't following the conviction. And I had hoped that it was better not to, because I knew that I couldn't walk away and pretend that I didn't know that what I was doing was wrong. That right there is a very intense place to be. And I think that is the place that a lot of people are in right now. They know they're convicted. They know they're walking wrong, but they're too scared because they love the world more than they love their soul. God is calling the bride back. God is calling his kids back home and it's time now because things are going to get worse and the deception is real and the deception is slow and the deception is heavy where some people actually think that what they're doing is okay we need to bring back the fear of god we need to bring back the god of the old testament the god of the new testament understand who he is and understand who we belong jesus did not die in vain jesus did not die for us to keep doing the things we're doing he came for freedom he came for peace in our lives so we can be in one accord with the father to not live in that torment of wanting to fulfill all these desires of our hearts that is basically jesus it was not in vain and we can't keep walking around like it's in vain and the church needs to stop because judgment is coming and it is not going to be it is not going to be good god right now is giving time but like i said when time is out it is done so we need to go back to the basics, even if we don't like it. And we need to start getting God right, because we have seemed to have lost the heart of God. People don't want to love anymore. They don't. They don't want to love. And let me just be honest with you. There's a lack of love, but there's also love that is false. And in the world, we're seeing a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Love is God says that he disciplines those who he loves. People don't want correction in the church. Then you don't want to walk righteously. And if you don't want correction, then you don't know what love is. Come on. It says, Come on. Right? One of the biggest acts is to lay your life down for someone else. You're telling me that someone who's seeing you in your filth, who's seeing you walk away, is not going to pull you out of it. That is love. Letting someone continue to walk the way they're walking is not love. I don't care if I lose you. I don't care if you hate me. I refuse to see you walk down a walk and pretend that it's okay. That is love. That is what Jesus does to us. That is the pursuit of the Holy Spirit. That is the conviction. So why are we not acting out of the conviction? Why are we not acting out of what Jesus is calling us to do? We are scared. Scared of what? Scared of man. We need to go back. Because if we don't go back, the church is going to continue. But you're right. We need all to come together and make this work because we still have the bit of time that we have. If we have today, if I'm alive today, we still have time. But time is soon. People need to repent and go back. And when I mean repent, it's not grieving. We need to turn away. We need to acknowledge what we've done. We need to acknowledge that he is a holy God. He says, be holy because I've called you to be holy. Amen. 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 And if he is holy, there is nothing in him mm-hmm. that Come is on. of sin or is of darkness. And we need to acknowledge that. We can't be walking and saying we serve a holy God and not walking in holiness. Now, I understand things are tough. Things could happen. We could be having a bad day, whatever. But what I'm saying is we need to start trying to really deny the self, deny the flesh, crucify the flesh, because this is getting out of hand. A lot of these people are just running rampant. And you know what? There's people out there who hate us. Jesus. Because the church has made a mockery out of God. Mm -hmm. Mockery out of love. Mockery out of Christianity. It is not a way for you to bring in money for fame. You know what? You might as well be in the world. I'm sorry. Might as well be in the world, but don't add God to it because God won't bless it. Amen. That's right. We need to go back. Amen. I'm going to go with my sister Manuela right there. Um, what we see now in the body of Christ is men that want to be businessmen and CEOs. Um, and within the, well, by, by this CEO is not by basically you having your own business. It's a CEO or a businessman by making business and merchandise out of the flock of God. It's illegal to do that. It's yes. illegal to do that. It's illegal. The Bible says in the book of Peter, it's illegal to do that. You see, when we, when we basically begin to break one law from the, from, from the Bible, one scripture, we can break two more scriptures. 
when we break two scriptures, we can break three scriptures. When we break three scriptures, we can break a whole paragraph. Hear what I'm saying, man of God. We can break a whole paragraph. And if we break a whole paragraph, we can take out a book. And now we have set ourselves to be reprobates. We have set ourselves to be Now people are picking and choosing. Picking and choosing what they're going to basically believe. And what they're going to preach. And what's convenient for them. And they get truth. And they twist it the same way G the same way the devil twisted scripture on Jesus. Oh, if you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, throw yourself from this cliff, you know what I mean? For it is written this and this and this and this and this, you know what I mean? And Jesus responded to him with the word because he was the word. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You see what I'm saying? The devil will give you insight and twist the word of God to keep you in sin. You better hear what I've just said right now. The devil will give you insight and twist the word of God. To keep you in sin and justify yourself and justify yourself. And that is sin, and that's not the Holy Ghost. For the spirit of truth does not inspire you to lie to anybody, manipulate anybody, deceive anybody. That's a demon, and, and you better get rid of it right. Like you better repent of your sin. We're living in the end times. For every person who's looking at me right now, who's looking at all of us, all the ministers here. And if you are five for gift and you compromising. I suggest you in love. I'm not going to expose you. God is going to expose you. Mm -hmm. I'm not exposing you. God is going to expose you. You, you. you can't see what God is doing. I'm not exposing you. God is going to expose you. I don't I don't even mention your name. God is going to expose you. God is going to bring you to a light because you will not mock God. And if you don't, if you don't basically, if, if you, if you don't, if you don't respect that, God will drop you because God can drop you too. God can drop you too. You will not go mm -hmm. with the glory of God. When it's in the house on that pulpit, and mock God, ain't that right, Prophet, Prophet Newman? Yes, and sir. You will not go. You will not mock God in, in there. How many people are actually clapping now and singing to God in their fornication, adultery? They're preaching That's on the pulpit, and they they're, they're homosexuals. That's hypocrisy. And, I mean, ain't nobody saying nothing because he's famous. He's famous that he can't be touched. Let me tell you something. I can't touch you, maybe. Maybe the young people cannot touch you, but God can touch you, and God will touch you. He will touch you. God will touch you, sir. He will Stop touch you. He will flick you off your little stage. He will flick mm. you off your little platform. He will flick you off your little, you know, your little mind, your little, you think you are a legend in your own mind. Hear what I said? You think you are a legend in your own mind. You think you are you are David in your own mind. You think you are Joshua, Moses in your own mind. God will say, boom, I'm going I'm to flick you off that, that place where you are right now. I'm going to expose you because you didn't humble yourself. Every man of God, great man of God, David, Moses, Paul, even the son of God, Jesus, practice humility, practice holiness, and practice righteousness. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it to my brother, Prophet, Prophet Randy. So two things I want to say um, uh, for time. Uh, something I heard the late, great bishop and Dr. Iona E. Locke from Southfield, Michigan, she made a statement on a woman's panel. And she said, um, holiness is not a denomination. It is a lifestyle. Oof. And uh, she made another statement. She said, mm -hmm. don't touch God. Let God touch you because he's still holy. Amen. And what we're dealing with in this day, I, I, I picked up some scriptures. I'm not going to be long, just a, a few minutes. Go ahead. Take your time, my brother. Take your time. First Thessalonians, I believe it's chapter number five, verse 12. Mm. It speaks about very clearly. It says, and we beseech you or beg of you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Mm. We need to know what we're sitting up under in these final days. Anybody can attend church, but is that pastor living holy? <laughs> is, the, is the people living holy? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Come on. Know those that labor among you. Mm -hmm. Even when people conversate with you and connect with you and befriend you, you need to ask the Father, are they living holy? Mm. Oh, come on now. Now you say mm. people want to befriend us, want our gifts, want our callings. There was supposed to have been three engagements earlier this year, and none of them came to pass. Wow. And I asked the father, was that his will for me to go? They were all canceled. Wow. 
Matter of fact, it never got off the ground. Wow. Neither one. One lied, and he's forgiven. He, he, he lied. Uh, the first lady of another church, she was too controlling. My friend was supposed to call me and tell me, get ready for service. But 12 o'clock, about two weeks ago, he never called. Wow. Because he was the jitney that was going to take me to the service. Wow. First service I was supposed to do, I told you about it. A three day, a one day revival, me and three other, two other prophets. Wow. He never got it off the ground. He got sick and ended up in the ER. Wow. When things are not lined up in the word and you are, God is not going to let you walk across everybody's pulpit or holy ground. Mm -hmm. well, I, I put it to you like this here. When God told Moses to build an altar, you cannot walk across everybody's pulpit and every pulpit is not built in the name of God. That's right. You got mm -hmm. that right. That, that I right. thank God he shut those doors. I was disappointed, but you know what? He keeps showing me three other doors. That's right. You That's cannot right. go where you think you should go. You go mm -hmm. as the Spirit of God shall lead you. The scripture says, those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Galatians. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right, man of God. In the That's book right. of Romans. And we cannot go across every invitation or pulpit. If they're not living holy, God will forbid. He will not allow you to walk across their pulpit. That's right, because you, you, you'll be a partaker of, 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 their, of their, their, their iniquity. You'll yeah. be a partaker of that. You'll be a, a, an accomplice to what they're doing in that house mm -hmm. or in that ministry. So that you, you're, you're 100 correct, man, man of God. You're 100 correct. Amen. And you're also about to see the hand of God bring strong correction. That's something he taught me in prayer. The hand of God is getting ready to bring a strong rebuke, a strong correction in the body of Christ. Oh, because yeah. They have not obeyed me. They are not living holy. They did not promote who I told them to promote. They promoted <clears throat> their children and others because That's of right. greed and money, but they did not promote the sheep that I gave them, the, the, the son and daughter. What you have to remember right. is also there's no gender in the body of Christ. Come on. Say it now. Say it. Say there's it. no gender in the body of Christ. That's right. That's Revelation right. That's chapter right. number three, verses uh, 20 to 22. Yeah. There's no gender in the body of um, That's right. Body of Christ. But I'm saying. God raised up those who are available to him. Whoop. That's right. <laughs> Got to be available. Yeah. Prayer, fasting. Yeah. And let God do the talking. We say we're going into prayer, but we do most of the talking. The mm -hmm. conversation is what? Two ways. That's right. Come on. Mm -hmm. God is getting ready to bring the very strong rod of correction. I know a pastor right now. Um, he greeted me Sunday. I won't say his name, will I, neither will I expose him. He said, God bless you this morning, Elder Newman. I said, God bless you too, Bishop so and so. He said, My friend. I said, Yes, sir. I've been on him for years. He ain't never said that to me. But wow. then when I walked away from him, I see him drop his head. Guilt, wow. shame. Wow. Mm hmm. What am I saying? Correction is in the land. A strong rod of correction by the Almighty, the Shepherd of God, Jesus That's Christ, right. is getting ready the to chief come shepherd, across. The chief shepherd. Chief shepherd <laughs> is coming mm -hmm. across the land. He's going to yeah. correct some things. It's going to surprise some of you. But all, most of us need to just go ahead and just live holy so you won't be a part of the correction. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Live holy before. Repent daily and turn away daily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Good. I'm in agreement with you. I'm in agreement, and, and I know that's 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 the truth. I've been I've been feeling it. Um, the generations that that we're seeing that the what 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 we have to be concerned, man of God, and, and to all the people that are hearing me right now, what we have to be concerned is about what are we raising up? Are we raising up genuine disciples, genuine men of God, or are we raising up a a generation that has no fear for God? That has no reverence for God. You see what I'm saying? Because we have this, we have, we have, we have young people that are on fire for God. They're radical for God. But the problem is that they cannot be corrected. They cannot be led. They cannot be instructed. Mm -hmm. Amen. And everything that we do, you have to whether whatever you are, you call to be a prophet, an evangelist, pastor, mm -hmm. an apostle, teacher. You have to be corrected. You have to be held accountable, and you have to be submitted. Amen. Under people that are older, you know, people that you can go, you can receive counsel for. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, there is safety in the multitude of counsel. Some of us 
don't practice that. Some of us run and say, oh, well, I hear from God. I go to God. You see what I'm saying? And they and, you, and that guy that you're saying that you're hearing, he never corrects you when you're, you're acting rebellious with other, 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 other leaders. Mm. You see what I'm saying? It's good. There's a problem there. There's a, there's a problem there. You have to you have to be careful when you're hearing, you know, you you hearing you saying, I'm hearing God. I'm gonna ask you a question. God never corrects you. If you're in the in the secret place, like from the prophet Numa was saying, you gotta you gotta hear what he's saying to you. It's not you doing the talking, oh well, God, I want to do this. Well, God, I want to do that. How how come you don't ask God? Reveal to me your heart. What do you want me to pray about today? That's Amen. Right. What is Amen. your will for me this morning? What is your will? What 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 do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. And he will God, show you. You know what I'm saying? Say, show, Lord, Lord, work on my heart. Make my heart more like more, more like yours. Mold my heart, Lord. Give me a softer heart. Work, you know, when you come before God, God will, if you really come genuine, God will expose all the dark, dark hidden things that are on your heart or in, 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 in your temple. He will expose it to you. He will show you, well, you know what? You came before light. Now, let me let light shine on That's you, good. my son. And That's let me good. show you what's wrong with you. What are, what are you dealing with? Amen. And if you're humble, you say, Lord, I'm seeing this. I'm seeing this. I don't want it no more. I repent and change me. Amen. Because you, you, you can get deliverance not just by a person praying for you for deliverance. You can get deliverance in the secret place as well. Amen. Woo! Amen. Ariel, my brother, you have anything to say, my man? Oh, God? yes. Um, there are many people who say, oh, I've seen God. Or I've encountered God, but a true encounter with God will change you. Not just your mindset, but your character. It will convict you. It will uplift you. It will comfort you. And yes, it will correct you. That's right. If you're living in sin and you get in the presence of God, you will feel ashamed. You'll feel automatically convicted. That's right. As, as, as Prophet Miguel said and Prophet Randy said, people hear from God or claim to hear from God, yet, yet many of them are still, are, still, are still the same. So question is, are they truly hear from God? That's I right. would say no. Because the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword to a sword as written in the word. That's right. God comforts, but yet he corrects. He yeah. convicts. If you're if you're uh, preaching the word, talking talking God, but yet living, living fornication behind closed doors, God will correct you. God will expose it. Mm -hmm. As stated in Ephesians 5, 11 to 12. I'm going to read it real quick. For, verse 11, it says, and have no fellowship with the unfaithful works of darkness, but right. rather reprove them. Verse 12, for it is a shame even to speak of those which are done in secret. It, 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 if, if you're preaching on Sunday, but yet going to the club on Tuesday or Saturday night, God will expose you. Yes, he will. If you're in the pulpit, but yet sleeping with half the congregation, God will expose you. He will Come not only expose you, he will kick you out of the pulpit. That's right. As it states in the book of Titus, verse chapter 1, verse 1 through 16, if you're called to be an elder, you have to live a blameless life. Come I on. repeat, if you are called to be an elder, you have to live a blameless life. Really? If you do not, you will be exposed. God will send someone to correct you. If not, God will send to correct you. If not, then that pastor or so-called prophet sh should be exposed among the con among the congregation. Amen. 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 And I, agree the with you. I agree with you. It's not my word. That is the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. Amen. The American church right now has become a fiasco. The American church today has become has become a show. It's all about show. It's all about performance, but not a call to holiness. And God is calling us all to a path of holiness. 
For time is short right now. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Woo! Repent. If you do not repent, there are consequences. And the consequences are eternal damnation. That is that is the word. Amen. 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 Brother, Brother Isaiah, you have anything to say, man of God? I too, for oh everything my being gosh. said here. Man, y'all get me fired up. Let me just tell you that. Y'all all get me so yeah. fired up. I want to jump out of my skin for the glory of God. It's so amazing to see these yeah. are answered prayers, man. When I look upon you, you know, Randy, and yeah. I hear you preach the word of God, and then I hear Mayella preach the word of God, and so much boldness and so much yeah. You know, accuracy, like pinpoint accuracy. Boom, we're hitting bullseyes. And then I hear Ariel getting fired up in the spirit. Yeah. And, it get, and it's so contagious. This, mm. this movement is going to be so contagious. This is the thing. I was watching today about King Solomon and all his glory. Mm. <laughs> this man, at the end of it, God forsake him. God told him, your son is not going to run. Your mm. son is not going to run Israel. As a matter of fact, we're gonna we're gonna give them an, we're gonna give Israel another heir because of the simplicity of not destroying idols, of not of, of, of yielding to other, you know, yielding to other religions and not and not just being a simple man that, that, that just yields to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Wow. The simplicity of the gospel and how it's been drawn out of context all these years. And I love to see brothers and sisters here on live checked in, not tuned out, not dying to their flesh, no. you know, not exhausting their flesh, and then trying to come up in here and then talk some Holy Ghost, spiritual deep revelation. No, you guys can tell every last one of you have walked the walk. Mm hmm you're dying to yourself daily. You're, you're, uh, and and something that Ariel just brought up. We gotta live blameless life, and uh, and, and and I want to bring insight. What's the simplicity of living a blameless life? Let's mm -hmm. let's let's talk about the simplicity of an application on this situation, on this, uh, on this, um, on this point. My brother just proved because that is scripture. That is scripture. I was just working with my father. And I stumbled upon that scripture and I'm telling you, my heart was racing. Boom, 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 boom. Beating in my chest as I'm reading this scripture. I'm like, yo, God, this is good. This is the meat and potatoes. How do we live blameless lives? Simplicity. Throw your body on that altar. Throw your flesh and say, no, nope, your flesh is not right. going to have no yes. In Come on. Today. What Come the on. Bible says is what the Bible is going to go. If I'm, I'm going to walk in every 10 commandments. I'm going to make sure I don't break none of them 10 commandments. That's the first simplicity of it. The wow. 10 commandments. Mm -hmm. Make sure you follow every last single Come one on. of them. Because if you break in the 10 commandments, then you ain't sin. And if you ain't sin, then you separated from God. And if you mm -hmm. separated from God, you 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 exalt in the flesh. And if you exalt in the flesh, the Bible said it leads to death. Come on. But to walk mm -hmm. in the spirit is to know life and peace. Romans Amen. 8, chapter 6. Or excuse mm -hmm. me, Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Yeah. To be led by the flesh is death, but to be or to be to have the mindset on the flesh is death, but to be led by the spirit is life and peace. We need to understand the simplicity of what God is speaking to his children. Mm -hmm. The new covenant is that it was further. That's the, that's another simplicity that we need to talk about here. Because we draw all this context, reading all this scripture, but we need to bring it all back in to hone it in, the foundation, the pillar. What's the simplicity of this? Oh, the simplicity is Jesus came to further the law. Oh, no, brother. No, brother. What are you saying, brother? <laughs> that he came... To further it, it's, it's got it got harder to live mm -hmm. for God. It didn't get easier. Oh mm -hmm. no, but we we you know back then it was almost impossible. You're right. It's That's impossible right. to live for God without the Spirit of God. So you Come need on. to know yeah. how to Come get on. to the Spirit yeah, of God, yeah. and how to get to the Spirit of God is to submit yourself mm -hmm. and throw yourself on the altar and say, "This is what I want." Okay, bet I'm not doing that. Oh, the world's going that way. Okay, bet I'm going the whole opposite way. Oh, they're right. eating McDonald's and Taco Bell? Oh, I ain't eating McDonald's and Taco Bell. 
Oh, they 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 drink that? That alcohol? Oh, I ain't drinking alcohol. Oh, they smoke that gas? Oh, I ain't smoke. I ain't putting nothing in my lungs. That's right. The That's simplicity, right. man, is that God, people are a chosen generation, a chosen remnant. That we walk by faith and not by sight. It don't um, got to make sense. That's right. It don't got to make sense. You got to walk by faith. God yeah. is going to, 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 to align you with his will, and that's ultimately what you want anyways. Your desires are vanity. Let's just be real. King Solomon in all his splendor, wow. you know, he's tweaking out. He's talking to his he, he's talking to his servant and he's tweaking <laughs> out. <laughs> all of this is vanity. I I I I I I I set my eyes to, to get everything yes. and I and I and I didn't withhold my eyes from anything. Wow. And it was vanity. Come on. So when we get in tune with the Lord, we realize that the, the, the flesh is the first thing that has to die. That That is the simplicity of the gospel in a nutshell. That your flesh has got to completely die. All Behold, you become a new creation in Christ. Becoming a new creation in Christ, literally, the simplicity of that is that you don't have no desires. But Deny to do yourself. the will of the Father. Deny yourself. Come on. Yeah. You don't have no desires but to do the will of the Father. I'm like, right. brother, you know, all my life I've dreamed of this and I dreamed of that. You know, uh, if it's mm -hmm. a God-given dream, then guess what? God's going to put you in the places that you're going to obtain that dream. Yeah. But if there was anything outside of that, guess what? You're not, you, that's, that's burning on the altar now. That's on yeah, the that's altar right. burning yeah. right that's along right. with everything else that you were, right along with all the other bunny, bunny trails that you were running down, you're placing that all on the <laughs> altar now. That's right. Uh yeah, no, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, wow. Like he's talking about how we get him fired up, but he gets me fired up. Uh and I think we're all fired up. Um we're all fired up. <laughs> yeah, we're all fired we're up. All fired. <laughs> to bring it back yeah. to what Ariel yeah. said. Okay, okay, um, but yeah, going back to what Ariel said, you know, Galatians 2 20 says I have been crucified with Christ. And I mm -hmm. no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life mm -hmm. I live in the body, I live by faith. Faith. Not by self. Not by my own will. Not my, by, by my own might, but by the spirit, right? I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for oh. me. Um, so, yeah. Ariel is correct because I am a testament of that story. And I do not feel shame because it is God's testimony. Uh, it talked about how he made a, you know, I made a mess of myself and he made mm. a mess. Um, so the testament of that is that when God truly does come into your life. Now, I have had encounters, uh, but, you know, I resisted flesh. I was like the flesh, the flesh, the flesh, the flesh. Oh, I can't my flesh. No, 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 no. Because I didn't know my identity in the Lord because I believed the lie that my sinful nature I just couldn't, I couldn't meet the mark. I was never going to be perfect like Jesus. I can't be like Jesus. That's self-righteousness. That's pride. Me, 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 striving, right? Which is what a lot of us in the world do. Um, but when you have a true encounter with the Lord, you cannot go back. It's not that you won't, you can't because you are not the same. Mm -hmm. You are not the same. It's like you wear glasses when you need a glasses. Everything is clear. How can you walk in clarity and still choose to go back to, who you were and what you were doing. Do not Jesus tell me, God. do not tell me that it has changed when it has not, because the fruit, right? When we're talking about the fruit, we're talking about the tree, right? The tree is going to bear fruit. I have an apple tree, let's say. My tree is bearing really bad fruit. I got to look at what's happening with the tree. Something is happening with the tree to figure out what's going on with the fruit. Now I can pick up the fruit when my brother and sister, you know, come over to my house and, and act like they're not going to see that I'm taking really bad care of the tree, right? The fruit's going to speak for itself. Now, the fruit isn't damaged, but the fruit, uh, the fruit, the tree isn't damaged, but the tree can start bearing good fruit. But it has to do with looking at what's wrong with the tree. We can't lie. The Bible talks about that you will know them by the fruits. So no matter what we say, what we do, the fruit will show. And the fruit of what God has done in your life will be evident. You cannot go back because that person is dead and gone. Sin is going to try to come back. The same, the same temptation, same stronghold, same bondage will come back, but it will not be the same. But because it is the spirit that now lives in us, we will be able to overcome it. Well, why couldn't I do it by my own self? 
because Christ was not my strength. Christ was not even in my life, right? The Holy Spirit was not my guidance. I was running around, rampant, doing my own thing, walking in the wilderness, literally, for I don't even know, the past, I, I'm 28, the past 26 years of my life, 25 years of my life, 26, in my own wilderness, because I didn't want to submit because I didn't want to crucify the flesh because I thought that, you know, my flesh was stronger because I didn't think that God could do it. I thought I was way too far gone. You know, the church rejected me because I asked too many questions and it didn't make them look good. The church didn't want to ask the questions because they didn't even know the answers to it. Right. They said, I asked too many questions. They said all these things that I just was independent. This, I was hungry for God and seeking God. And I was in the wilderness because I did not have discipleship because I did not have teaching. Because people were telling them my, my encounters were not real. When God comes in your life, it will show. And it will be evident. And you will not be the same. And even when you get put in those same places as before. Now, hear me out. I'm saying put, okay? One thing is walking into the same places you used to. Another one is being put. You will not want to be there. God will be evident and you will see it and you will know it. And it has to come down with truly surrendering, truly submitting, truly acknowledging that he is God and you're not, and that you need saving. And that takes a lot of humility. And I had yeah. a lot of pride and I wanted to do things my own way. Cause I wanted to, to have the salvation of God and be, and be loved by God and have eternal, you know, all these things that they feed to you because you're, you no longer want to sin because you're scared of the consequences, but, you no longer not want to sin because you're disappointing God and you're separating yourself from the one that loves you. We need to go back because when God truly does touch you, you will see it. And I feel like we're struggling. <laughs> the young people are struggling. The church is struggling and we need to have real tangible experiences. When the glory of God falls, the flesh submits like it or not. We've seen it in the Bible. When the glory of God falls on someone, you cannot. I had an encounter with the Lord, okay? This one, this one right here, I, I, he, he broke down the pride. He came into my room, okay? I didn't see him, but I felt it. The atmosphere changed and instantly my head went down and I could mm. not lift my head up. I got off my bed instantly, I kid you not. I talked about how the flesh controlled me. Oh no, the flesh, the flesh, the flesh. No, the flesh did it. Instantly, my body got up on its own and fell to the floor. I was terrified because in that moment, I did not have control of my body. My flesh submitted instantly. In that moment, I knew God is here. Mm. I fell to the floor. I got up looking mm. down. I fell to the floor and I said, oh my God, what did I just do? I did not do this. And I tried to look up and I could not. And I could not. And I closed my eyes and I looked up and I saw a light. With my eyes closed. I was allowed to see with my eyes closed. I still had my head down. But when I closed my eyes, I could see what was above me. And it was God. In that moment, in that moment, I could not deny that he was God and I was not. Because I was the God of my life. And that I would submit to him, like it or not. And that when it came down to it, I had to choose. That changed me. And then I had another encounter. And then another encounter. But when the glory of God falls upon you, you cannot tell me that sin will not bow down. You cannot tell me that the flesh will not bow down. Because he is holy. We will know them by the fruit. Mm -hmm. We'll see it by the fruit. Mm -hmm. and God is seeing the fruit of the church and the fruit of his children and we have grace and we have mercy but we're calling our brothers and sisters back we're calling them back to the first love the same way God is calling his kids back the same way Jesus is saying come back to your first love which is me some people grew up in the church and they have fallen back some people did not grow up in the church but it's time to come back it's time to come back because the world is not worth it. You will never be satisfied. And when you truly have encountered the Lord and truly have noticed and known and tasted the goodness of God, you won't want anything else. 
And I think people are not truly taking God seriously in their abusing mm -hmm. of his faith. Now that we're going into Passover season more than ever, I think a lot of people feel it. They feel it. They feel the tug. Oh, Jesus, they watch the movie. We are not to be pulled and tugged during Passover or Easter. A lot of that should be an everyday thing. Jesus, they watch the movie. We should acknowledge and love and walk and notice the truth of what the cross is. It's love every day, not just on Passover, not just on Easter, not just on Christmas. This is the problem. We don't love him. Mm -hmm. We don't love him. And until the God in us, Holy Spirit, hey, surrendering, is stronger than our sin, we're going to keep going back to the world. So it is time to choose him or the world. Come on. Because there's a lot of brothers and sisters out there who have a lot of gifts and we're waiting for them because the body cannot work unless we all are together. Amen. Come on. That's and right. we're losing our brothers and sisters to the world because of lack of teaching, lack of love, lack of discipleship, lack of sitting with them in their struggle, not shaming, but sitting with them in compassion, but guiding them because a lot of them don't know how to get out. And it's because the church says, you know what, you're in this, you know, you're, you're damned. We need to start taking accountability. We need to start taking responsibility. And I'm talking to the young ones. And I'm and this was this was a preaching that I had to do on myself and God you know, did to me. We need to start taking responsibility for our actions. We need to start taking responsibility for our sin. And we need to allow correction. Amen. Because the leaders know, the elders know, and it's coming from a place of love. A lot of us are walking around with an orphan spirit, not allowing correction. Not allowing discipleship, thinking everyone's trying to control us. Everyone is trying to shame us, but God is using these men and God, men and women of God to love on us to bring us back. We need to stop with the pride. And we need to submit. How can I say that I submit to God when I don't submit to my elders? Jesus. How can I say that I submit to God when I can't submit to my own parents? How? We're losing it. We're losing the heart of God. Who is the Father? Who is the Son? Who is the Holy Spirit? That is something that we need to check in our hearts. Who is he? Because the world has perverted it all. The world has created their own trinity, their own understanding of things. It needs to stop. We need to come back. Our brothers and sisters are falling away because the fivefold is not working together. Everyone wants to be separated, doing their own thing. We need to bring them back. We need to disciple them. We need to carry them. We need to love them. We need to show them the love of God. But we also need to correct. Because there's a choice we have to make where we choose the world or we choose him. But I think a lot of the churches are too busy with performances, too busy with money, too busy with numbers. Like there's people begging and asking for help and nobody wants to see them because you're not going to fit my vibe. You don't tithe. That's a very powerful, powerful point you said right there. You know what I mean? Well, you were gonna say something right there, Prophet on um, Randy. Yeah, I was I was listening to her, but I was seeing her face, and I don't know this person personally. Mm -hmm. Um, y'all may know him in the Spanish community. He's a recording artist. I heard the Lord say in my right ear, pray for Ricky Martin. Oh wow. Oh. Pray, wow. For pray for him. I just seen his face like in a vision. And wow. said, you know the devil ain't gonna tell you that. No, of course. <laughs> Pray for him. And I've seen him with this real bad guilty look on his face. Wow. My gosh. Wow. A look of shame. Pray for him. I don't know why the Lord spoke and just said, Pray for Ricky Martin. Mm, wow. Wow. We gotta we gotta do it. That, that soul can be saved. That soul can be saved because um basically uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but um another quick um Hispanic reggaeton artist gave his life to Jesus was Daddy Yankee. You know, God is working on, even on the famous people. God is God is working even on the famous people. He was says God is even working on the famous people, and he want he desires some of the famous people to be saved too. Amen. And we have to. That's why we need to basically, you know, what I mean, continue to pray for them, intercede for them. All those people that are basically not safe, that are that are famous. So God can do a work in them and they can be testimonies. They can be, since they have so much influence, they can they can bring many to the, to the kingdom of God. The Amen. worship leaders are being called back.
And we can't forget that prayer moves mountains. Amen. And, and if you, I'm sure a lot of intercessors, full-time intercessors have one of the mightiest testimonies of how God moves on behalf of their prayers. So wherever God's calling you, whatever realm of influence, whatever sphere of society and mountain he calls you to pray for, start praying. And I I know a lot of people actually get dreams of celebrities. Um, it's not a very uncommon thing. And sometimes uh, even the Lord had revealed to me as well, uh, different celebrities. Um, I had a dream of J Jennifer Lopez, maybe uh, two years ago. And it was weird because I felt like I was inside of her body and she was performing. But as I was kind of like half of her, I could feel her emotions. And she was so drained in sadness and heartache. But she was so overwhelmed and tired at the same time because she had to keep performing. And it's almost like every ounce of her body didn't want to perform, but she had to. So a lot of these singers and celebrities are a slave to what they compromise for. The fame, the money, and to put their music out there. So I do know the Lord is calling a lot of people to start interceding for celebrities because God can touch them just as he turned Saul into Paul. He will turn many of these people into a new creation. And God wants the people in Hollywood. He wants them because God knows if they can influence thousands of masses into hell, one celebrity, if he just got one and he's actually getting a lot, God is actually a lot of them are converting. A lot of them are exposing the Illuminati, the darkness. A lot of them do not care anymore because I believe God is really touching hearts this hour. He's really revealing himself and that and it's such a powerful thing. But we must keep interceding for if God gives you a dream about somebody. No matter where that what area of realm that they're working in, you need to start interceding and intercede every day because God will start building um, more revelation into that realm and area. So I know that there's some intercessors that they have the most mightiest um, testimonies. Mm. Hallelujah. Miguel, you muted yourself. <laughs> All right. I muted myself. My apologies, guys. Um, basically, I just, I'm in agreement with everything, guys, every, all you guys are saying here. <clears throat> Amen. I'm in agreement with uh, everything everybody has said right here. Um, one of the things that I felt God was saying, he was emphasizing was um, the holiness of the leadership in the body of Christ. Amen. But we have to be an example. I keep, you know, I keep hearing the fivefold. But one of the problems that we have in the fivefold is that we don't see holiness in, in many of the leadership. Whether you're an evangelist, prophet, apostle, all these gifts have to become practice holiness and righteousness. Amen. We have to practice it, and we have to align with what God is doing in this new season in the body of Christ. We have to really align with what God is doing. We have to leave our pride beside and align with what he's doing. The old have to accept the, the, the young, and the young have to accept the old. Does that make any sense? We have to come together. I was says in, in Timothy, let no man despise thy youth. Mm -hmm. Let no man despise thy youth. You know what I mean? Um, because the problem is that some people, oh, well, he's not qualified. Well, the elderly has to work together with the young, and the mm -hmm. elderly have to part into the young and the young have to acknowledge and honor the, the elderly because the bible says in timothy also show your elders double honor for them amen especially those who, um, um, those, who, those who labor among you amen so mm -hmm. those people that are laboring among you that you know the elders we gotta we got to show them double honor we have to amen the devil has brought the vision to the body of christ you know mm -hmm. what i mean and it all has come down because of the term platform or the term pulpit but I want to say something. 
the first person who moved in the fivefold gifts, all of them, right? Who was it? The the chief evangelist, the chief apostle, the chief prophet, Jesus. the chief teacher, the Jesus. chief pastor. Who was that? It was Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Jesus didn't have a pulpit. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not have a pulpit. His ministry was an everyday life. Mm -hmm. One day he was in a wedding. Another day he was on top of a mountain. Another day he's in a well prophesying to a woman. Another day he's, you know what I mean, you know, reading a scroll, you know, in a, in a temple. You know, he was all over the place. But everywhere he go, he brought ministry with him. Everywhere he go, he, he brought ministry with him. And he did the work of a philanthropist. You see what I'm saying? He helped the poor. He was compassionate with the poor. Amen. And he brought glory to the Father. Above all, he brought glory to the Father. And he practiced what he preached. Hear what I'm saying to you. He practiced what he preached. And he served. Even though he's the chief apostle, he wasn't making people bow down before him. He bowed down and began to wash the foot of Peter. Hear what I just said right now. He... Being the chief apostle, bowed down and began to wash the foot of Peter. But now you hear people saying, well, I'm a pastor, I'm a bishop. You got to serve me. You see what I'm saying? And let me tell you, the higher you go in, 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 in whatever fivefold office you are, the higher in reality you go, the more you have to serve people. Says, Jesus said to the disciples when they were competing among themselves, who was the biggest one? He says, the biggest one is the one who serves the most. And I am the one who serves the most. You see what I'm saying? If anybody, anybody here is watching me, wants to basically be, be basically, you know what I'm saying, serve, and you call yourself an apostle, you might want to rewire your mindset and go back to the scriptures and read re what, what an apostle is. That's what I'm going to say to you. We My ministry is definitely watching some the scriptures and read what an apostle sure. is or a prophet. And if you're a prophet and you're using your gift to manipulate people, to hustle people, to mm -hmm. take, get, get money out of people, I watch, you watch, you watch. You got you. You're gonna repent. Maybe if you if you repent. If you don't repent, if you do not mission. repent, you're not gonna make it to heaven. That's the you know mission. what I mean? I'm telling you the truth, because the Bible says God is no respecter of man. Mm -hmm. God is no respecter of man. Now there's there's prophets in in in, in, in there's prophets in this in this um life. You know, in this Zoom meeting, including myself, including prophet. You know, um, prophet um Newman, including my brother. Uh, every there's prophets in this life. I tell you what. You know what. I never heard God tell me, take money from this person. You see what I'm saying? Never when God, you know, the unction of the prophetic comes upon me to speak to somebody. He never tells me, oh, you know, take money from this person. He tells me to give a thousand dollars. Never heard that. <clears throat> you see what, you see, uh, have you ever heard that, Prophet, Prophet Randy? Are you older than me? You've been in the office longer than me? You see what I'm saying? So that's what I want to say. That's what I want to say. I never heard it. I never heard it from Agabus. I never heard it from from, from Samuel. I never heard it from Elijah. Elijah was coming against this. Elijah came against this too. You know what I'm saying? Read your Bible, folks. I'm just saying this right now because I'm about to end this life. Brothers and sisters, and this will, this goes for five full gifts. Please read your Bible. Mm -hmm. Please read your Bibles and examine where is your metron of authority, your sphere of influence. How far can you go and where has God has called you? Some of us some of us, it is, and for the people who are watching me, some of us are not called to be a global prophet. Some of us are called to be a prophet to a house, to a fellowship, to a ministry. Some of us are called to be a prophet to a state. Everybody's not, let me just call it off what it is. Everybody's not a Deborah. Everybody's not an Esther. Everybody's not a, a Jeremiah. Everybody's not a Samuel. Everybody's not a David. You know what I mean? Everybody here plays a different role. It plays a different role. And you got to ask God, what is your role? What is your what is what, what is your sphere of influence? Amen. What is your sphere of influence? Do not abuse what God has put on you. Do not abuse what God has put on you, and go now, and and and, and make a you know make a scenery, and draw people to yourself because true prophets don't point people to themselves; they point people to Christ. Mm -hmm. what I just said: true prophets don't point people to themselves; they point people to Christ, not to themselves. To Jesus. It's all about Jesus. They reveal Jesus to other people. Jesus. Amen. The prophetic is given to reveal the heart of God concerning people. You know what I'm saying? What is his heart concerning a certain person? 
when we use the prophetic to manipulate people, to get people to do what we want, that is witchcraft. Yes, amen. And I'm saying it right now. That is witchcraft. That goes for every five foot office. You're an evangelist. You cast out demons. Well, you got to sell into me a thousand dollars because, you know, I'm, I'm a famous evangelist. I don't got time. That's my ministry. No, 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 no. It cannot That's be a witchcraft. ministry. That you are prostituting the anointing. You have no authority. Use the anointing of God. You cannot use the gift of faith, which is the gift of use for casting out demons, or the gift of miracles, which that's also the gift of use to cast out demons. You cannot use that gift illegally and make profit out of it. Hear what I'm saying to you. You cannot use that gift and make profit out of it. You're not allowed to. You you you're, you're exercising things illegally that it's not right in the eyes of God. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Enough of the abuse in the body of Christ. Yeah. Pastor, evangelist, teacher, apostle, prophet, enough of the abuse. Your primary role is to equip the body of Christ, build disciples. Show me your fruit. Show me your fruit. Stop, stop putting on title. I'm an apostle. This where's your fruit? Not even not even four souls under your under your boat, and you're an apostle. Yeah. No one knows about Jesus in your, in your neighborhood, but you're an apostle. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a prophet, but you never point no one to, to Christ. All you say, okay, you know, let me prophesy to you. So the first thing you lay, you, you the first thing that you put on your live video, there's no burden. You have no burden from God. How you a prophet? You have no burden for his people. You have no love for his church. How you a prophet? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't understand. Could you prophesy? No, you're not a prophet. You have the prophetic gift. But the office you don't carry, because the office carries a heavy, heavy burden for things of, of the of the father. Mm -hmm. It's true. At night you will see yourself weeping. You will see yourself weeping because God is he, His hand comes heavy on you, and He begins mm -hmm. to tug on your heart concerning what's going on in in, in His body. Prophet Danny, mm -hmm. we were talking about the fivefold gift. If you want to have any input, man, of God. I'm, uh, an apostle, there's some people who, who are premature, call themselves to be an apostle. It takes time to process a calling in your life, especially mm -hmm. high, the higher the call, the higher the octane mm -hmm. from the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And an apostle has the grace to turn a, a parking lot into a church. He's a pioneer. Mm -hmm. He's a sent one. Therefore, he has ascending and the ascending of Christ mm -hmm. is upon him. And he has the ability to, to, to operate like an evangelist, start a church from scratch, from, from the very foundation. He's a foundation gift. Foundation ministry is a ministry, is a is a revelatory gift to the body mm -hmm. of Christ. <clears throat> he can have the ability to, to raise up all five full ministry gifts. That's the grace. Mm -hmm. And not only that, to raise them, but to train them and then to, then to send them forth. Because an apostle is a sent one, is a sending anointing. That's mm -hmm. a true. That's the true seal of the sign of a true and apostolic, a, a calling and anointing. You have the ability to raise up and train sons and daughters, and then raise them, and then send them out, equip them, mm -hmm. and then deploy them. Mm -hmm. You deploy. You must and I, I, I see a lot of talk, but I don't see that part. I don't see the fruit. Amen. I, I see the title, but I don't see the function. That's right. I see the title and, and the entitlement. Roll out the red carpet. I, I put my pinky ring on. I'm impossible. No, no, get out of here. <clears throat> that's that's vanity. A man is owned by the, the true the grace of, of, of Christ in his life. Paul said, I have the marks of an apostle of my life. True apostles go through, they go through persecution. They go through things that Melody. develop character in their lives. And they also have the equipment. The proof is in the pudding. The signs, the wonders, the miracles, the anointing right. that the companies that now the money, Prophet Danny. Now the now the money. The signs no. and wonders. The signs and wonders. Sign, the power. Signs and wonders. If that confirms their calling, otherwise you just have a title. You have the anointing that confirms your calling. Things happen. Fruit happens. People get delivered. People get healed. People, uh, you be, you're, able to, you're able to raise up and train up leaders and, and then raise them up and send them out. It's one of the signs of an ap apostolic call. Otherwise, it's just, you know, they're not an apostle. They're a fossil, like you heard me say before. <laughs> they have a fostolic anointing. Fosto <laughs> <clears throat> and then you produce fossils. They don't do nothing for the kingdom of God. They just have a title. 
they don't make impact in, in, in the earth. That's right. You, you're 100% right yeah. about that. You're 100% right about that. And they have to see Jesus, Prophet Danny. They have to see Jesus. Definitely. They have to see Jesus. They have an encounter with Christ. That's right. It, it's, every, it's, it's by every, biblical law. Yeah. Every true uh, apostle and prophets are revelatory ministries. They do have encounters with Christ. Whether it will be a, a, a physical appearance of Christ, the dreams, the visions, they're having some encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. That radically changes them. They're not. The, they don't. They're not the same after they're at that encounter. How can you be the same? You see the Lord Jesus. Come on now, that's the, that's the truth. How can you ever be the same when you see the beauty of the Master? Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't. Mm -hmm. I just saw his feet once. It's the scars of his feet. And you just want to fall down and worship him. That that's alone. Right. That alone just ca captivated the heart. Just his feet, not his face, not his eyes. Man, that's 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 deep right there because when people say yeah. that see Jesus every 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 other day, Prophet Danny, they see Jesus every <laughs> other day, you know, and that's a that's a whole nother subject, you know what I mean? But I'm like, how can you see Jesus every other day and just just yeah, talk well, about it like a joke? You know what yeah, I mean? Like impossible. Yeah. When, I when you have an encounter with the Lord Jesus, that the Mashiach, the oil, the anointing can rub off on you. The anointing will rub off on you. That's right. I, I was sharing with Ariel the other day that uh how I, last year I had a vision of Christ. I was in the I was in the, at the I was at the Jerusalem Center, which is a uh, <clears throat> and and we were our, we were time of intercession. We were praying, and uh, and and I saw the appearance. Of the Lord Jesus appeared in the vision form, and he was he was anointed with oil. He is the Mashiach, the anointed one. The Messiah means the anointed. Mm -hmm. Actually dripping with golden oil from his head down his beard down to his whole garment, he's dripping with oil. That was just messed me up. That alone just messed me up. You know, that was Jonathan Kahn's church. In fact, uh, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, my pastor is one of the associate pastors under him. Our ministry shifted with them. That blew my. That blew me away. I, I was. I was. I wasn't expecting it. That's the thing. It comes supernaturally. Out of the blue, if you want to call it that, when you have encounters with Christ or with angels, uh, it radically changes you. It just changes your your paradigm, shifts and changes. You are more inclinated to the realm of the supernatural when you have encounters with Christ in his presence. Amen. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Any, what, anything what, you want to add to the anything you want to add, Prophet Danny, um, concerning because we spoke about the reformation of the church that's currently uh -huh. happening in the body of Christ <clears throat> and the uh, function of the fivefold gift. Anything you want to add from your experience? <clears throat> You've been like you know, then you have been in this in this for quite some time already. <clears throat> well, I believe all the fivefold ministry does have to function and operate in the local church. In other words, the, the body of Christ can't function with just a pastor. An evangelist alone, that's that's crippled. Mm -hmm. Or a teacher, it's a tripod. No, it's a five-fold. Five ministries operating. All these are the the um, the extensions of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he gave gifts unto men, it says in Ephesians 4, he gave gifts unto men. The word gifts there was not the word charisma gift. Like it says in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and he, <clears throat> and he gave gifts and some some have the gift of prophecy. Some it says all can prophesy. In other words, all can prophesy, but not all prophets. But in Ephesians four, he gave some to be prophets. But the word gift there is a different word. The word mm -hmm. gift in First Corinthians the twelfth chapter is the word charisma, where you get the gifts of the spirit. But in uh, Ephesians four chapter, the word gift and Christ gave gifts and. First Corinthians 12, the Holy Spirit gives the gifts of the Spirit. But in chapter 4 of Ephesians 4, it's Christ, the ascended Christ, gave gifts unto men. The word gifts is the word doma in, in Greek. The word doma denotes office, an office, a ministry gift, an office, which is a whole different ball game. So it's a, a place of authority. It's a governmental in function. A gift is a gift that edifies the body, but a gift to the body of Christ is a is a function, it's an office. 
It's and it's governmental in its nature. It equips the body of Christ. A gift cannot equip you. A spiritual gift will edify you, but it does not equip you. Here's a, that's a good. Here's a good. Here's a good separation. A gift can edify you, the gifts of the spirit, but an office, a ministry gift, can equip you. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Equip you to do the work of the ministry. A gift doesn't equip you to do the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. It equips you to edify, to build, to encourage. It's powerful, yes, and needful, yes, and we should pursue them, yes, and be motivated by the love of Christ. But an office, it comes to equip the body of Christ. Every fivefold ministry gift, evangelist, pastor, teacher, is called to equip the body. Because we all know that. But we, a lot of people don't know the, the, the difference. And mm -hmm. also how the gifts function and the, and the office ministries are operated at a different uh, level. That's right. Different level of a level, of a level, of a level uh, different level of, of authority. A greater mm -hmm. depth of, of, of gifting and anointing, power, authority, mm -hmm. in order to equip the body of Christ. Does that make some clarity there? Yes, that's right. That's yes. right. I'm going to agree more with that. <clears throat> yes. Randy, sir. Randy, you want to say anything else, my God? Prophet Randy? I do feel a different anointing up here tonight. Oh, wow. Um, it's a wow. different anointing up here. I feel a release. Yeah. And I know I'm not the only one for the last couple of days, it's been very. Uh, high in the spirit, very intense and high. I don't know. If the, I'm not the only one been feeling that. Mm. It's very wow. thick on the. Uh, it's like another dimension or a different cloud. That's mm -hmm. right. There's something going on between the heavens and the earth. Wow. You can feel it. Something's wow. God is moving some things, obstacles, and hindrances out of the way. Different wind, man. I got a different wind. Yeah. A different, different wind. wind, yeah. In a different dimension. That's right. A different mm -hmm. level of the prophetic. Because it's, it's, it's that one office, but it's different levels. That's right. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. I feel a different level in here tonight. It's a different level. Amen. That's right. Like I'm I gonna... feel the presence of God too, my, myself. I feel the presence the anointing of God. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's definitely a shift, and I, I do sense that things like this have to be shared within um the body of Christ. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. this is not a, this, this, this whole panel is not about. Uh, judgmentalism or anything like that. It's just mm -hmm. basically security. Yeah. Right. People mm -hmm. in the body of Christ. And some right. of us have been looked over. Uh, I remember dreaming about mm -hmm. being on two different panels about four years ago. Wow. And I said, Father, he said, you hear me, son. He said, I'm going to put you on panels with other prophets. And here I'm up here with y'all today. Wow. 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 Even, I didn't even know Miguel four years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's and something, huh? Ain't that something? Ain't that something? And Prophet Danny, Prophet Danny was 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 used by God to confirm this because I spoke it when I was in North Carolina, when I was in Charlotte, I spoke about it, right? But we never executed. But when it wasn't, it was right here. Yeah. It was right. when Prophet Danny said, "Man, I'm seeing a panel where we come all together, right? And like a round table, it. yeah, a round table, and we come and we just have these talks, and mm -hmm. um, it's really powerful because there's people that are hungry. You know what I mean? They're not, they're not in our our personal group. You no, know, the group that we have. But they they basically can get partaken and right. get wisdom and, and, and knowledge imparted into them because you know in the body of Christ we have many voices now, many voices. Yeah. yeah. But few are speaking the truth. We are, mm -hmm. are speaking by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're it's powerful when we're in, in one accord, especially <laughs> the five gifts. Yeah. When we're all here together. That's you true. you create the you create the cluster effect. You know, all the all everybody here is like mm -hmm. powerful. Right. The yeah. new wine is the, old, is, young, not, I don't want to say old to you guys, but I'm talking about the young us, the young people in the in the in the in the mature generation. You know what I mean? Like you and, and Prophet Danny, you know what I mean? It's really yeah. powerful. And it should be an example. <clears throat> an example to those people that basically are coming up now to <clears throat> receive the elderly, to receive the, the elders in the body of Christ, to receive <clears throat> them. Because there's a lot to learn from them and a lot to take from them. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and God wants to use them to to both 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 generations, you know what I mean, to, to do a mighty move in the, in the in the body of Christ now in this end times. Yeah, I said the new wine is found in the cluster. That's right. The new wine is found in the cluster of the grapes. That's right. That's right. You know, it's not it's not just one grape. It's a it's a, it's a unity cluster. Right. There's, there's the, the the 
the emergence of different graces and anointings coming together. That's right. That, I, feel, I feel like anointing on that, brother. I feel like anointing yeah. on that. I yeah. feel like anointing on that. It's really, it's really powerful. <clears throat> and 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 it shows that the five folk could work together. That's you know right. what I mean? To it's, it's supposed to bring truth. To bring truth to a body of and it should be like yeah. that, Prophet Daniel, because when you read the book of Acts, apostles, <laughs> prophets, all of them work together as a team. You know, all of not all of them, you know what I'm saying? People now. Some pastors don't even want to get along with a pastor in the other block. You know what I mean? They don't want to get along with that. And that's that's error. I feel like, you know, people just, I mean, of course, you know, you're not going to get along with a false teacher or a false leader. You have to, you know, you have to protect yourself. You have to protect your flock, the people that God has given you. But what I'm trying to say is, is beauty when the brothers in Christ, especially the fivefold gifts, come yeah. together in unity. You know what I mean? I believe it pleases mm -hmm. God. I believe it's, it's really powerful. I believe it's, it's something that people get edified from. And, and it's something amazing. I, I personally, myself, I, I enjoy it because you, you get to see different um, perspectives. You know what I mean? Especially when you have two others, like you and Prophet um, um, Randy, which I honor. Amen. So you you bring those two those two elements because they, they, that's a, a, a season. Like it's like a more like a season anointing that's on, on, on you guys. Now, basically, you've you gone through all this um, season in, 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 on your walk. You know what I mean? And you have already passed by all these trials and tribulations. And you can basically you, you can basically release and, and, and impart to the, the people that are that are coming up now in the body of Christ. Amen. It's yeah. really powerful. It's really powerful. Yeah, in my lifetime, I walked through four moves of God. Wow. Four moves of God. Wow. Yeah. So I've seen we have a history to look back and see. Truth as well as error, and what people missed it too. Wow. Well, God was reestablishing re truth back to the body of Christ, wow. but not everyone moved in it. Oh, you know, I, 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 I moved, I moved, I, I moved through four of them. Wow, already I walked through four of them and partook of it and learned of it, but I'm continuing to move on. The cloud of God is moving. See, a move of God ceases to move when the cloud starts moving. Or let me let me correct myself. A move of God ceases when we stop moving with the cloud. The cloud is always moving. Damn, that's right. Sometimes and sometimes it stops, like the children of Israel stopped. And mm -hmm. they have and they they pause and they they camped out there. But when the Holy when the Holy Spirit began to move again, they had to pack up and move with the cloud. So in every move of God with the Spirit of God will, will, will camp and rest for a while. He's emphasizing truth in the earth. And then when that season ends, he's, he begins to move. It is, it's the, and we have to re relocate in the spirit and move with the cloud. That means God is on the move. He's also he's pouring his spirit out afresh. He's emphasizing new things. Right. Things that the body of Christ is no longer practicing. We have to repractice it. What's the thing the, what is the thing that people are not moving with today? A thing called holiness. That's what we just said in the beginning. Oh, man, come on now. We were talking about it before you jumped in, man. Hey, don't get us fired up again, Danny. <laughs> Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. You won't That's see right. the cloud. You won't see the cloud moving. You won't discern the cloud moving. Oh man. You have lost your discovery. When you have no holiness, you have no discernment. We've seen Martin Day Eli's today. <laughs> who lost that discernment? Right? Oh my goodness! Come on, come on, prophet. Say it. God is speaking. God is speaking. I hope everybody is listening. I'm to not. The I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mention names. But all you just gotta survey the body of Christ today and see what's going on. Do you have That's eyes it. to see? Can yeah. you hear what the Spirit is saying? What He's emphasizing? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Even so, the, the yeah. sons of e the sons of Eli are manifesting themselves because the fathers didn't correct them. That's all. Uh oh. <laughs> In fact, they've, they've been joining them. My mm -hmm. goodness, my they've goodness, been joining them. My my goodness, my goodness, and and, and it doesn't take yeah. a, a prophet to see this, Prophet Danny. Even no. a babe can see it. Even, even babes are seeing it. Even a baby. To, anyone that's that's plugged in to God, that you're living a life of prayer, you you you'll see it. You'll perceive it. The Holy Spirit will. Uh, the alarms will go off. You'll, you'll see the red flags. You know, mm -hmm. God has given us all discernment. Yeah. You know, yeah. See? But that this the, the cloud is moving. Mm -hmm. You know, 
in the some places, the, the cloud is, in, the cloud in, is moving. In some the places, the, the the ark has been captured, like in the times of the Philistines that they were the enemies of Christ. They captured the ark, which represent the manifest presence of God. Mm. Right, which produced Ichabod. The, the 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 glory has departed. Means that's right. The kavod means the weighty presence of the glory of God. The ikavod means the presence has lifted, has departed. In many houses, the glory, the weightiness of his presence, the conviction. It's easy to walk into the presence and you feel the love of God. You feel the, the weighty presence of God. You fall, you fall on your face and worship him. You adore him. When that element is gone and you just got entertainment. Mm -hmm. See, we've <laughs> We want to be entertained. It's the other way around. We forgot how to entertain his presence. Amen. It, 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 worship entertains his presence. That will bring him on the scene. It mm -hmm. is a divine love affair, a divine romance. Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord's into. Intimacy wow. with Christ. Wow. When you're kissed by his presence. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's what tests. We're, we, we just want to be entertained today. Mm. But it's producing mm -hmm. death. It's producing death. It's not producing life. Too much laughing in the church. Yes. <laughs> Come on now. Too much laughing on the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. This the, we have lost the sobriety, the holiness, yes. the awareness of this presence. You see, it's a, it's and, a sideshow. It's become a sideshow. We're, we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not what they call. We're not entertainers. No, we're not. We're not called to be entertainers. You know what I mean? No. I, I, even 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 the singers and the rappers, you're not called to entertain. If you are, if you're a Christian rapper, your job is to yeah. win souls for Christ. <laughs> yep. You know what yeah. I mean? You should use use that music to win souls for Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Like Jesus. It's not it's, just, it's not for you to basically try to be a a Kanye West in, in in the pulpit of a church. Don't try no. don't try to be looking all flashy. Use that That's game to win souls for Jesus. That's, Amen. Kanye West is demon. Cast your nets. He needs deliverance. He's trying to visit. He 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 I said, it said he's he's not right in his mind. He needs to live. Kanye's clone. He's, he's not even here no more. Major. Kanye's no. clone. He's not even here no more. They took him out the mouth. Mm. That boy yeah. was preaching too much truth. Yeah. Oh, it's just he's been. That's the simplicity. We need to see for young for, for young man. He needs deliverance. His mind is. He's been and I'm uh, telling you, I, I, because he's his mind, his mind has been hijacked. Mm -hmm. It's mind control, it's witchcraft. There you go. Yeah, yeah you're right. It's mm -hmm. a good way. It's real, it's not fake. It's not fake. It's not fake. Yeah. Some people if we could have this conversation another day, I'm not a top on another round table. But mm -hmm. to the believers that are watching, Illuminati yeah. is real. Um, uh, the satanic agenda is real. The the, the 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 sign of Satan is real because some people some mm -hmm. don't like talking about demons, Prophet Danny. Mm -hmm. They don't even like casting out demons. I don't want to mess with a devil. I just call it for what it is. The demonic realm is very real. Witches are real. Mm -hmm. Witches are real. Everything you see is not God. You know what I'm saying right now? And there are witches in some churches and warlocks. Come on. <laughs> I'm just Absolutely. calling out for what it is. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Just calling out for what it yeah. is. Yeah. <clears throat> you heard it. It's Strange mm -hmm. fire of twisting of the scripture, making a mockery of God. It's, it's all blasphemous. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why I, God is angry with the church today. This I is heard, a revelation. I heard, I heard someone recently speak about, he calls himself a prophet. I heard someone speak about spirit guides. Oh God. Okay. There's no such thing as spirit guides as a prophet. Mm. Jesus. There's no such no. thing. There's no such thing as spirit guides. I don't, I don't no. care. I don't care oh, what you okay, my, my friend. Let me say something. Those are demons. That's not, that's not biblical. That is not biblical. Prophets never, no. you know, no. Moses never spoke to a spirit guy. Jeremiah never spoke to a spirit guy. Ezekiel never spoke to a spirit guy. No one spoke to spirit guys. Where is this at? Where is it in the, in the Bible? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, hey, I've been hearing some goofy revelations. Not even authentic revelations. They're just goofy. They're like, man, they're made up. I'm like, bro, you're gonna be, who are you going to meet up next in heaven? Spider-Man? <laughs> Superman, you're gonna meet up in heaven too. You saw him up there too. Who's next? You know what I mean? Like that. We hear some goofy, goofy revelation, and people believe it because yeah. like circle just it's like. It's hey, like man, brother, you can see, you can see, you can see. Man, get out of here with our nonsense. Well, that's a proof that people are not reading their Bibles. Thank you. Oh, they're not reading the Amen. word. 
Yes. Yeah. Amen. They don't, they're not being taught sound doctrine. That's right. The word sound means healthy. That's right. Mm -hmm. Healthy. No, that's right. Because it says my it's, people it's, lack of what? Right. Lack of they, lack, they perish because they lack knowledge. They have a lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Right. Lack of knowledge. And that's the knowledge is the word of knowledge and the word of God is full of knowledge. Come on. That's why you got to study the history of the text. Yep. Danny and Evangelist Miguel will tell you, I guess they probably sense it, I study a lot more about the history of the text. Mm -hmm. When I say yeah. I see the, the hand of God moving upon the church mm -hmm. in judgment, they did the same thing in the book of the Hebrews church, in the book of Peter, because of their ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially under the law, the Old Testament. Like yeah. Israel. One minute they was with God, the next minute they walked away from God. King after king, priest, prophet, judgment, then they'll come back to God again. Mm -hmm. Now we are not, not under the law, we in the New Testament. But now you see God cleaning church, and I see that broom again. God is sweeping across this church and cleaning house. <clears throat> He's cleaning house. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Amen. He's going to raise up leaders who, who can show their scars. Come on. Mm -hmm. And tell the people, this is what I've overcome. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have, you have to real. have a testimony, but also, even in that, you have to use wisdom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because you got some people in church who are not fully delivered, mm -hmm. and you can attract mm -hmm. that same spirit. Oh. And, and deliverance is real. Say that, Prophet Daddy. I'm trying to destroy you. Deliverance is real. Deliverance is real for the body of Christ. For yeah. those who do not believe in deliverance, Excuse yes, me. a Christian can have a demon. And I said it. All oh, yes. you can agree oh, it. yes, they can. Yes, they can. Yeah. Yes, they can. Yeah. Let's not get religious. Oh, that, you know what I'm saying? Well, how can the air bites? You need to go back and read the book of Kings or the book of, book of Chronicles when, <clears throat> when Solomon builds that temple. In the temple of Adani, you know what I'm talking about? There are many rooms in that temple. I'm yeah. going to say there are many rooms in that temple. In that temple, it's in you right now today. Right. This time yeah. is in you. So there are many right. rooms. There's a mm -hmm. room that carries the Holy Ghost, but there are rooms that haven't been submitted to the Holy Ghost. Right. And who's who's living right. there? Who's right. living there? In other words, if you haven't been submitted to the Holy Ghost, if, and who's living there? That's the question. Who's there? Who said if if you if you're not hosting the Holy Ghost, you're hosting something. Mm -hmm. Woo! That's right. And, and some are hosting hostess Twinkies, but something else. <laughs> Those people people that. fall wayside to doctrines of devils, yeah. and, and, and they think and they think that they're outsmarting b believers. They think they're silly enough to really believe in their head that they're outsmarting God or or God's children. Yeah, and they fall to the wayside to doctrines of demons, chakras, and mm -hmm. and all of this esoteric knowledge that they believe that they came across some type of some type of out of this world alien woo 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 knowledge bro when when you read the bible and it's simple that's it, it that's very that's it goes, it, it goes back to um going going back to basis uh the, the word of god is true anything discussed that, that is not better than scripture or does not line of the word of god is it is, is, is you throw it out because because um because it is called doctrine of devils yeah. Exactly. Well, that's, that's and why they I think we're, we're brainwashed, and we are. Thank you. By the renewing Thank of the word, word of God. That's why right. before you join any church, you church to church history and church doctrine. Who are they offering themselves up to apostles mm -hmm. or the teachings of Jesus Christ? That's why you check you check the church doctrine. Mm -hmm. I said mm -hmm. about the ministry they said they oppose themselves as the apostles of Paul. What well, <laughs> people, man, don't people act like straight up devils. <laughs> They had no character, they spoke in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance, but they were not fully delivered. Their character was low, but their tongues were high. Wow. They were unbalanced. Wow. Like a justice scale. And they also had problems with adultery and fornication. Jesus. And they would not sit down. They would not sit down. And they did not like when you got up to preach correction. See that those are the those are, those are the sons of Eli. That's they never right. submit. He to carried themselves. that spirit on them. That was the spirit they, on the person. They could never submit to the of spiritual fathers who correct right. them. 
right. rebe- the seeds of rebellion in them. That's so right. when you well, if you sit under a leader who is rebellious, what are you going to learn? What kind of spirit's going to get on you? Rebellion. Rebellion. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Spirit of fornication. They had sex in the sanctuary. Yeah. So be careful when they lay hands on you. What are they going to transfer to you? Yeah. I won't let him lay hands on me. He tried to, and I blocked him a couple of times. So that was the oh, yeah. Look at that guy. Like, ah, like, 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 don't don't do me, like, ah, you know. uh, brethren, brethren. Um, I went to uh, I went to see a guy, a famous guy on on YouTube. I'm not going to say his name. He he was doing all this stuff. I did not feel right about him, and and someone I used to know. Asked me, uh, suggested I I have lay hands on me. I said, uh uh-uh, uh, the spirit is not right here. It's not right with him, and I got the heck out of there. And, and lo and behold, years um a year later, he was exposed to not not only be a be a heretic and a false and, and, and false, but he's aligned himself with with another false prophet. That's why it. That's why it. That, that's why it is imperative that you have the sermon. If you don't have the sermon and you don't use a sermon, you'll be caught up in the, in their evil. Right. That's right. Oh, scripture says, "Birds of a feather flock together." Oh. Come on, that's fire. That's Bible right there. Birds of a feather flock together. That's it. That's and it. Many, many times, foul things like the foul birds like to hang with each other. That's right. Rose too, brother. Then rose too. Yeah. Rose yeah. too. Those two. The real yeah. prophets, the real prophets have a have a sound. Hear what I'm saying now. Their true prophets, mm-hmm. Prophet Danny, have a sound. And the sound mm-hmm. aligns because when you came in here now, you repeated what me and, and, and Randy and, and Eric were speaking about. You say you came and you mm-hmm. repeated the same thing. Because real prophets, you know what I mean? They have a sound. They have a sound, <laughs> man. I got they have a sound. They come here and they have they have the same sound. But fake ones well, also have a sound, Prophet Danny. Yeah, they, they also just... have a they have a sound too. Yeah, it's just the sound of deception. Mm-hmm. You know? Come on. <clears throat> but then what frequency you you you're tapped into. Thank you. You know? Yep. <clears throat> are you flowing? Are you flowing <clears throat> in, in, in in tune and in sync with yeah. Papa's heart? Or <clears throat> are you are you running down some bunny trail? Thinking that you got to figure it out, leaning on your own understanding, and 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 re- and reading stuff that you shouldn't be reading, mm-hmm. because people even do that. They're, oh, I'm gonna study the devil. I gotta know what I'm up against. All right, bye. I hope 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 to see you come back. Cause no, God never told you to do that. Study my Bible. <laughs> study my Bible. Yeah, that goes back to this demonology nonsense we're, we're hearing about, um, Brother Isaiah. Yeah. People that, that want to study the, the demons and all of that. Okay, <laughs> bye bye. I'm gonna be studying er- my Bible. I'm gonna be that's, studying Old Testament, New Testament, and that's it. It's called error by emphasis. You mm-hmm. can take any truth and <clears throat> overemphasize and go off, go off into error. It can be the prophetic mm-hmm. in deliverance. It could be truth, but when you start going over the edge, then you start going into error. Mm-hmm. False doctrine. For instance, not everything is a demon. Demons are real. And the board says that we're not ignorant concerning Satan's devices, his modus operandi, how, yes. how he operates. We're not supposed to be ignorant. Of that spiritual warfare is real. The armor of God is real. Demons are real. <clears throat> and we should yes, have knowledge. Father, but, in Jesus name. but everything is not a demon. In other words, I knew a brother like that, uh, got to hang out with him. Everything's a demon. I said, bro, <clears throat> we went out to eat. And everything's. I said, bro, what's the deal with you? And he's telling me all this stuff. I think he was from, uh, he was from, uh, I'm trying to remember what uh, island he's from. I, anyway, I said, brother, everything you tell me, I know. It, because, you know, I'm ca- a Caucasian. He thinks that I don't know a thing. I said, my roots are from the, from the, from the island. Bro. I'm Puerto Rican. Yeah. Everything, yeah. I know what you told me. He said, oh, you really? See, I don't, at the beginning of the lot, everything says, I know all this stuff. But you, everything is not a demon. You're more yeah. demon conscience. You are Christ conscience. Mm-hmm. Come on. Come on. And that's, what, and that's what we're seeing today in the body of Christ. You're yep. more demon conscience. You're Christ conscious. No. You begin, con- if you come Christ conscious, when demons show up, you know how to deal with them. In fact, they will recognize you. Mm-hmm. They will recognize your authority because you're more, and you're in tune to Christ, not the demon. I'm looking for a devil. Every day I'm looking for a devil. <laughs> and then, look, the devil's under my feet. My He's a defense. Thank you. That's the position of a believer. 
That's what Amen. must bring your mind. He's the fetus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, you're supposed to be chasing devils. They're another way. They run from you. Mm -hmm. Come on, hell. Mm -hmm. We need to change our paradigm here. He's defeated. Yes, we engage. We have warfare. But when you're equipped, when you know, because you're in tune to Christ. Amen. Become Christ, because not demon conscience. And this is why people go into error for error by emphasis. You overemphasize this. You living in fear, not living in faith. Wow. I know that's right. That's mm -hmm. true. That's that's you, right there. Yeah, you're not operating in you're operating in fear, not in faith. Like the devil this, devil that. No, you're operating in fear. And fear have torment. Hmm. Yeah, people, people, and then people make ministries out of trying to expose the devil when rotten fruit falls by itself. And you attract Thank people you. Who, are who are tormented. We should help people. Don't get me wrong, but if you're attracting people who are constantly tormented. So you got them going around the circle, and they never get free. You know, you know what's going on right now too. Someone thing that was make, being popular right now is not so popular because I, I think it has gone down. <clears throat> it was a ministry of deliverance. There was a wave of deliverance, a so-called um famous um deliverance and stuff like that going on in the body of Christ, and. People will go from one meeting to the next meeting to the next meeting to the next meeting to the next meeting. Why they're not being fully free? I'm gonna say why they're not they were not really fully free. The, the reason they were not being fully free was because some of them, Prophet Danny, and all the yeah. people that came in this in, in this meeting, they were not fully free because they were not disciple, and they were that's not right. proper to maintain so free. That's that's right. I can Absolutely. cast just about a person right now. Boom! Get out of the name of Jesus. Right. And you're gonna go back into sin. You're gonna right. go back. Pornography, you can go back into all that. You're right. gonna, he's gonna come back and he's gonna come with ceremony. Right. You, you haven't gone to, to be disciple, get in the word, get in prayer. You, you just go back. And, and truth be told, and you truth be told, you don't have any, you don't even have to expose these people. You know what I mean? Because some, some people are being spiritually <coughs> rotated, Prophet Danny. They're being they they're, they're being out there, you know what I mean? They're being put on the spotlight. <laughs> and truth be told, that's that's something personal. Deliver something personal. You know what I mean? Yeah, you shouldn't be putting out on social media where so, everybody can see you got right. right? Right, we need, well, we, need to, we need to protect people's dignity. Exactly. But you sometimes exactly. you got to lose your dignity to get delivered. That's something else. That's pride. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of let course, me of let course. me give you a good example of that. Um, years ago, I remember in the early '80s when we had the 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 um the AIDS epidemic, right. a lot of people dying of AIDS, and uh, <clears throat> this young this man of God who was had a strong anointing, he was an evangelist for God was using him for for healing. And miracles, right. especially, but he had a great success rate for praying for people who had AIDS. They would get healed and delivered from AIDS. And I was I was there. I was at this meeting, this particular meeting in New York. Mm. And the woman came up, and she was supposed to be a believer. She was in a wheelchair, and she's dying of AIDS. And he was praying, was seeing miracles and everything. And he's about to lay his hands on this woman. And just when he's about, he, he pauses, and he says to her, Sister, what are you going to do when God heals you? She said, I'm going to get up. I'm going to go back to the club. I'm going to start dancing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what he did. Oh, man. This is what he did. He laid hands on her and said, Lord, take her home. In Jesus name. Wow, man. Take he did home. the right thing. He did the right thing. Right, because she's going to lose her soul. She, if she's going to heal, you're going to go back into the world and lose your soul. Yeah, so he said, he laid, he laid hands on her, Lord, take her home. Sometimes God will give you a thorn in the flesh to keep you humble. Amen. Yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's See? better to be have a throne in the flesh and make it to heaven <clears throat> than yeah. be good and go crazy and, and go to hell. Yeah. So <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and some people have been taken before the time because God wants them to make it. That's right. true too. That's See? true because God wants them to make it. He says, so, you, a, lot people, a lot of people were saying, "Well, that's God's that God's not merciful." No, that's that's merciful. He was saving the soul. You go back and get destroyed for. Go back into the world and get lose your soul. Amen. Yeah. You see? That's, that's, that's so good. Exactly true. You know, the way, I had no intention to live right and holy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's right. No facts. Yeah. But it's facts. true. You know what I'm saying? God wants us to live a holy life. And we, this generation is, is man, we need a revolution, don't we? Amen. We need a revolution of holiness. That's Amen. right. God is speaking tonight. God is speaking tonight specifically on holiness. 
-hmm. specifically, he really Muhammad, is. He's speaking specifically on holiness tonight. <clears throat> specifically, he's bringing emphasis to it. Yeah, <clears throat> very, very. People hear the, <clears throat> the the voice within the voice, like Prophet Danny teaches. Yeah, their voice within the voice. Hear it. Hear what and the if, Spirit is saying. Hear what the Spirit is saying. People get on the live and just say, "Oh, they're hiding." No, 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 no. When you hear prophets and, and people that Bible gives, please mm -hmm. hear what God is emphasizing to all of them. Hear the voice within the voice so you can hear what God is saying. You will, hear God, you, will hear, you will be able to discern the heart of God concerning a matter. Come on. In, 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 in this hour, in this season that we're in right now. And That's we good. have to be ready. We have to be ready, guys. We don't have much time. That's good. We don't, we don't have much time. God is coming. The Lord Jesus is coming very soon. And we yep. have to be ready for him. We don't yes. want to be like the foolish virgins. Uh, they got no oil. I mean, they didn't have no God in them at all. Yes. No, no they, they were not even close to God. You and couldn't even bring a better like, illustration. It's going to be like the wise virgins that kept the oil, the lamps full. Amen. Right. Practicing holy. Now, that lamp is not going to be full. If you're in fornication, adultery, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're not righteous, if you're not seeking God, and God is emphasizing also in this season too. My brothers in Christ who are watching this, he's emphasizing that he wants us to go back to the secret place to spend time yes. with us. The Lord is calling us back to the secret place. Yeah. Consecration, and yep. He's calling us back to our consecration where we seek mm -hmm. Him more. Yep. Right. We fast, mm -hmm. we pray, and we spend time with Him because in that yeah. place, there's going to be instructions being released to some of you for yeah. your assignments and for your walk with Him. Amen. God is Amen. calling, God is calling yeah. many of you to, to do that. Not a one a 20 minute prayer. Don't 20 minute prayers ain't gonna work anymore. No, yeah. that ain't gonna work anymore. Right. A, a, a part-time Christian can't defeat a full-time devil. That's right. Yeah. True. I'll say yeah, that man. again. A, a part-time Christian cannot defeat a full-time devil. Yes. Amen. And I just wanna I wanna add to I, I wanna add before you go. Prophet Danny, because I already know you got some other things on your mind, but mm. like we can't we can't perform holiness on our own strength. That's mm. why God is calling us to consecration. This is a simple way mm. that God is it, is it everything is full circling as Miguel just spoke. Everything he just brought it all back into full circle. Cause every time I hear mm. a deep revelation, I always think of application. Mm. If God is calling us to holiness, okay, how can I apply this to my life? So many times, the reason why the gospel is so counterfeit nowadays is because we're preaching without we're, we're preaching the revelation with no application. How can I apply this to my life? So, simply, all I wanted to interject with is that uh, the consecrate we can't do this on our own strength, and it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that 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 gives us new life, that gives us a renewed mind. That, 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 that leads us out of darkness, that leads us into a lifestyle of consecration, mm -hmm. set apart, set aside, a holy remnant. So I want you to understand that don't feel condemned. Don't feel like you got to do this on your own. You got to go to the scriptures. You got to mm -hmm. go to the Father. You got to fellowship with him and he will clean you up. It's a partnership because mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. longest time, I would just feel so, I like I was carrying so much baggage because I couldn't be holy. I couldn't do, I couldn't do what I knew I was called to do. And God, as I fellowship with God more, as I put more time in the word, as I got surrounded around the body of Christ more and more and more, it took me years. I come from a lot of baggage and a lot, a lot, a lot of trauma. So mm. it took me years to clean my life up. So mm. I'm just saying that if in these seasons where God's, where the time is drawing near and God is coming back, he's going to accelerate it for some of y'all. But mm. I'm just mm. letting you know, like, it's not an overnight thing. And no. that the Holy Spirit is going to empower you to walk out a lifestyle of holiness as you consist consistently get in the word and fellowship with him and consecrate and fast and pray and get around the body of Christ and, and, and brothers and sisters, they can sharpen you, get held accountability and, and submit to, to leaders around you. And it, there's mass simple, but yeah, I just wanted to interject with that. Praise God. In Jesus name. Do you have anything to say? Do you have yeah. anything to add to that? Paul tells us to uh, work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Fear and trembling. Why? Because we understand the severity of it. Because we actually know that what we're doing is wrong. And also because it's an everyday thing. It's a lifelong mm -hmm. thing. 
Um, and so, you know, in order for us to walk seriously, we got to take it seriously. Right. We might as well just kind of um, not do anything if we're not going to be serious. So holiness, uh, we're called to holiness because God is holy. Um, we're called to holiness because we are called to be like God. Uh, we want to be in communion with God. We want to be one with God. Uh, we want to be like our father. Right. And we want to be able to uh, be one accord with him. And it takes, like I said earlier, uh, dying to self and uh, renewing of your mind. Right. As as a lot of you have mentioned, um, the more we get to know him, the more we spend time with him, the more we become like him. So less of us, more of him. Less of us, more of him than we become his image bearer. So it takes a lot of and I've been saying this quite a bit, but choosing what it is that you want, uh, the world or him. And um, yeah, I agree with with, with a lot. I, I agree with what's being said. Um, I definitely do believe that, yes, holiness is something that is being uh, highlighted. And God is calling us to holiness. God is calling us to deeper holiness. And um, there's a lot of internal examination that has to be done in the body uh, to really see where it is that they are. Um, hmm. But God wants a spotless bride. He wants a spotless bride. Hmm. And that requires choosing because God, God is willing, but we have to also step into it. Right. Hmm. So everyday thing, it's not an overnight thing. God is gracious and God is good, but we also can't abuse of his grace and his goodness. Hmm. So that is all I have to say. <clears throat> Let me give you an example of something. This is an object lesson teaching. It is something, you're going to have to use your imagination. I call it using your sanctified imagination. Your imagination has to be sanctified, correct? I want you to imagine a, a glass, a crystal clear glass, glass, right? And in that glass, you're going to fill it, let's say, with milk. Milk, right? White milk. Now you're going to take that glass and you're going to put it under a faucet. And you're going to put the faucet really, really light so it just drops of pure water falling into the glass of milk. Now, what's happening slowly? There's a transfer in taking place. The milky white substance is getting clearer and clearer. It now is getting into a cloudiness. It's getting clearer until this transference takes place from, from pure milk to a cloudiness to, to crystal clarity. What happened? There's a transference taking place. This is how sanctification works. When you give yourself over to meditating, studying, the washing, the watering of the word, and being constantly filled with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will wash things out of you. Is a river, like a river comes and it washes things away. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we cooperate with the Holy Spirit. We co-labor, we partner with the Holy Spirit. We're communing with the Holy Spirit. And this transference is taking place, the spirit of holiness, because the Holy Spirit is holy. You have to invite the Holy Spirit. You have to embrace the inner workings of the Spirit of God with fear and tremble, like, like my sister was saying, out of that partnership. And I said, Lord, I desire holiness. I desire to walk with you. I desire to be conforming to your image and likeness. I think I can't do it on my own. Of course, it's called grace. But I am. I but I cooperate with you, Lord. I welcome the inner working. As I renew my mind through Scripture, as I partner with you, as I continue to get filled with the Holy Spirit, God begin change your desires now. The things that you start you don't like anymore. So you begin to hate sin. You begin to hate unrighteousness. You begin to hate compromise. Everything is constantly because that transference is taking place when you're under the washing and the watering of the Word. That transference is then it becomes crystal clear, holiness, transparency, intimacy with Christ, transparency with your Lord between you. That's part of shalom, though. Shalom means nothing between us. There's transparency, there's communion, there's fellowship. I don't hide nothing. Even when I mess up, I don't hide. I don't hide. I come to you and say, Father, yes, I messed up, I sinned, and I get back, I get cleansed again, and I continue my walk with him. He desires you. In fact, he pursues you more than we pursue him. Did you know that? And tonight we hear his voice, his gentle whispering. We hear a theme flowing tonight. God is calling us unto himself. He's welcoming me. If you're not right with God, if you're far from the Lord, he's still, the Bible says, if we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. 
we draw close to him, he will draw close to us. So I want to encourage you tonight, wherever you are in your walk with God, he loves you. And he wants to change and transform you because you are his son. You are his daughter. You are his beloved treasure. Amen. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. That's right. Harden not your heart. Says, harden not your heart. Soften your heart. He loves you. He wants to change you. He wants to transform you. This any, and, don't, any, and don't believe the lie of the devil that you yeah. cannot change. That's because right. Because he is the master changer. Yes. He well, will transform you. On. Come on. Yeah. That's fact. <clears throat> right. That's fact right there. That's fact that's right. right there. And anybody that's watching the live that probably didn't comment or or that basically uh wants to repent if they've been in, in any type of sin or they felt like God they have been away from the Lord, they've been out. I say a particle son. They feel like they've been a particle son. Today is the day that you have to repent. Amen. The day of repentance. And today yeah. the Father is, is welcoming you back. If you come genuinely to him, he will welcome you back. Yeah. He will not condemn you. He will not reject you. He's waiting for you. Amen. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. Waiting for you. This is any leader, any leader watching this live, if you have any sin, confess it to your fa father. Come before your elders in your in your fellowship. You have pastor, apostle. Whatever you are, teacher, come before your elders and your, your, your leadership and confess it. Confess it. And, 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 and you know what? God will restore you. Yes, he will. God will restore you. God restores people. People that come humbly, the Lord restores, restores them and works for them. That's not, it's not like, oh, God's not going to use me no more. No, that's not how it works. God will basically restore you and he will continue yeah. using you. We all fall short of the glory of God. This, 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 this life is not to condemn anybody because I'm about to wrap everything up. It's been really powerful, but it's not to condemn nobody. It's to encourage some of you yeah. to practice holiness and righteousness and to know that God wants you back. He wants you yeah. back. If he puts you out there on the spotlight and he puts the spotlight on top of you, it's because he's saying, I'm calling you. Stop yeah. running away from me. I'm waiting for you to come back to me. Amen? I was waiting for some of, some of, some of the people in the body of Christ to come back to me. Come back to him and repent. And that's it. It's very simple. It's very simple. It's better to be right with God than with men. Yeah. Forget about your ministry. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't, there's, there's no point of you having a million followers and not making it to heaven. It's, pointless. it's all vanity. That's right. You know what I mean? The most important point is to make it to heaven and be right with God. And Jesus tells you in your face, well done, my faithful servant. So it's up to you guys. You know, it's really up to the guys. The people are watching the, 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 the video. You know, it's really up to you guys what you want to do. Whether you want to get back, get come back to your master, come on, come back to your father, or you want to continue to play the game. You know what I mean? Amen. God, peace and love. I'm not condemning nobody. Please reconsider what's going on in the body of Christ. Reconsider what's going on in the body of Christ. That is not easy. And, and things are not getting, you know what I mean? Things are not uh, getting easier, like where people are hiding. No, in this time, the people that are hiding. God is exposing some of you. It's not man. It God is God is the one who's doing it. And that this whole this whole this whole life, this whole thing, this whole round table is not about exposure. We haven't made it about that, but we are saying a call to repentance to all those brothers in Christ that are part of the fivefold to repent. If you're in sin, please repent and mm -hmm. please come back to the Lord. You know wholeheartedly. And he will restore you and he will yes. keep, keep using you. There's no shame. There's no yes. shame in, in, in repentance. Amen. It's, yes. God honors that. God honors when people come humbly and, and, and confess their sins. The Bible says <clears throat> that confess your sins one to another and you shall be what? Restore. You shall be healed. Amen. When you confess yes. your sins, you're going to be healed. Because believe it or not, I think Paul's up inside, Paul's up inside. And it, it, it gets to the point that you no longer even want to listen to God or you, you just begin to ignore his voice. And you become you enter a reprobate mind. God will give you to a reprobate mind, and that's a whole nother topic. A whole nother, that's nother scary. That is very scary. That's I scary is what that is. Family. So, um, God bless everyone. You know that join us tonight. God bless the the others here, Prophet um Rand, Randy, Prophet Danny. Um, God bless my brother Prophet Ariel, and uh, my brother Evangelist mm -hmm. Isaiah, and my sister Manuela too. Evangelist uh, Manuela, God bless all you all all of yes. you. Yes. In the name of Jesus, and it's been a pleasure um coming forth.
and letting the Lord use us. Amen. Yeah. With this, for edifying the body of yeah. Christ as you know, five, as fivefold gifts. Amen. Yeah. To bring uh, to bring more clarity and 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 to basically bring people higher. So that's what that's the point of this. Yeah. Um. Any um. I would like any who wants to um close. Uh, anybody wants to go close in prayer? I, I could do it myself if anybody wants to do it. <clears throat> Um, Isaiah, you want to close out in prayer, my brother? I'll close this out in prayer. Yes, sir. Father God, we just come before you right now, mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, and we just thank you, Father God, for this night of fellowship, this night that we got the opportunity to be mouthpieces for you, mm -hmm. Lord God. Everything that you're placing on our heart, Father God, we just pray that you continue to cultivate the grounds of our heart, Father God, to continue to yield fruit to you, Lord Jesus. We mm -hmm. pray, Father God, that uh, we just continue in humility and meekness, Father God, as we pursue you, Lord God, that we just continue to surrender to you and yield our hearts to you, Father God. And we just pray that all the cleaning and purifying that you want us to do on our end, that you just give us the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of how to clean ourselves up, Father God. As we're partnering with the Holy Spirit, Lord God, and I just hear the voice of the Lord saying, if you're thinking about quitting next week, if you're thinking about quitting the, the week after that, tonight is the night that you give it up to the Lord. It's not going to get easier. It's not going to get any less more tempting with the, as, as time progresses. If you have been battling with addiction, you need to surrender it tonight. It needs to go on the altar. And it is a sacrifice that you will be making to the one true living God. And mm -hmm. he will honor it and then work with you in removing and helping you with the desires that come with that addiction. But he is saying tonight that to not wait to put it on the altar. And Father God, we thank you for your for your for your voice, your living word. We thank you that you're continuing to speak to the church. We thank you for your grace and your mercy over the church. We thank you, Lord God, that you're leading people out of darkness in this hour right now. We thank you that you're withholding the wrath of God and judgment of God from, to, from America and from other places uh, globally right now. As we clean ourselves, Father God, as we preach the message of repentance, as we preach holiness, Lord God, we thank you for the time period that you've given us. And we thank you that you're accelerating us all into our into deeper realms of intimacy, into deeper knowledge of our callings. And we pray, Father God, that we bear fruit for you in every season, Lord Jesus. We pray that we continue to surrender all, all, everything that we can possibly think of. Lord Jesus, bring it to our minds. Holy Spirit, shine a light on our hearts and continue to just clean us up. As the time progresses, use us in mighty ways. Use us to perform your miracle signs and wonders like the word says, that we will do things even greater than you did. And Father God, we just humbly present all of this and we petition it before the throne of grace. And we ask you, Lord God, that you would move on our prayers, that you would move on the hearts of your children and soften the ground and make it fertile ground for new for new crops, for new abundance of your love, of your grace, of your compassion, Lord God, of your holiness, Father God. We pray that the holiness and the fear of God sweeps the land like a wave tossing the ocean. We pray a tsunami wave sweep across America of holiness. Men that yes, are going to rise up and be a lion and speak for you, Lord God, and be bold and be fully equipped with the wisdom and knowledge that it takes to lead your people, Father God. And I pray, and I pray Father God, that the grips of the enemy will <laughs> loosen now in the name of Jesus and that you will, and the enemy will let our people go from the bondages and in the principalities that are ruling over regions, that you start to raise up men of God that are going to take over cities and new territories and build cities of holiness and righteousness and purity in the land that was once yours, Father God, that has been hijacked and has been has been smelling like vomit before your throne, Lord God. And we thank you and we worship you in spirit and in truth, Father God. And we come to you with a pure heart and clean hands, Father God. And we ask you, Lord, mm -hmm. that you renew our minds daily and that you forgive us of our sin and that you allow us to pick up our cross and walk this thing out in fear yes, and Lord. trembling before the most high living God. For you are the Alpha and Omega. For you are the beginning and the end. And you are the reason that we're here today breathing. You place the breath of life inside of our lungs. 
and the and the heartbeat inside of our chest and the blood flowing through our veins. We pray that it glorifies you, King Jesus. We thank you for dying but rising again. Hallelujah. And you're coming back on a war horse dripping in the blood of your enemies, Father God. And you and we pray, Father God, that you start to equip us, Father God, with how to annihilate the kingdom of hell for your glory and to save souls and to bring your children back home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Blessings. 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 To everyone that was life. Amen. I love you guys so much. Wow. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Wow. Wow.